they're about to not throw it out. My name is Ben Hayes, and you're watching USA vs. Japan Championship Baseball. The starting pitcher here for the United States is Stephen Gidry. He'll be facing off the United Second base, Jeremy Ironman at third base. Caden Grenier is playing shortstop. Jake McCarthy is in the left field. Travis Swagley is in center field. And Steele Walker, in my opinion, the perfect baseball game is playing right field for the USA. for Japan, we have Kairi Shimada, who plays left field for Japan. Batting second is Takeshi Miyamoto, he plays shortstop. Batting third, Kita Nagakawa. Batting fourth, Taishi Kusumoto. Batting fifth, Taiju Utsumi. Batting sixth, playing center field, Ryosuke Tatsumi. Batting seventh, playing third base, Ryo Kobayashi. Batting eighth, playing catcher, Hiroki Obata. And batting ninth, playing second base, is Haruki Takimura. You know, this was a really exciting uh, game today, I think, with both teams. They're being both national teams. It's definitely good exposure for them. Absolutely. And we are just about underway here at Campanelli Stadium, leading off for Japan, Kairi Shimada. Steven Gingery is the pitcher for the USA. And here comes the first pitch of the ball game. Swung on and missed for strike number one. Good start there by Gentry there, starting off the game there with a strike. Shimada comes from Jobu, Japan. That's where he goes to school. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one's going to be high and outside for ball one. To even the count up at one. One ball, one strike, no outs here in the first inning. Here's the pitch. It'll be just low, ball two. Here's the 2-1. That one swung on in, missed again for strike two. Count is knotted up at two again. Here's the 2-2 pitch. That one's going to be in the dirt for ball three. Good block there by Koch. Good block there. Gingery comes all the way from Huntington Beach, California. Goes to Texas Tech where he's a sophomore. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on in, missed for strike three, and there's out number one here in the top of the first inning. Good start there by Gentry there, mixing his pitches. in the first at bat here gets a strikeout for the first time today. And the first batter. Good way to start if your team USA here. Mm. That'll bring up Takeshi Miyamoto, second hitter here. He squares the bun and pulls it back as he watches ball one from Gingery. Saw there where he squared up to bunt, and Jeremy Ironman, the third baseman, came running in. 1-0 pitch, he squares up to Bunt again, pulls it back, but that'll be strike one.
One ball, one strike, one out. Here's the pitch. That one's just a bit inside. Ball two. Get that ball low for ball three. Three balls, one strike. Here to the number two batter, the Japanese lineup. Here's the 3-1. That's going to be inside. And Miyamoto gets on first base with a free pass. The first base runner of the ball game for Japan. That'll bring up Kita Nakagawa, the first baseman for Japan. The number three hitter. He digs in here with one out and one runner on. The OO. First pitch from Gingery is low for ball one. <clears throat> this is the 17th game for Team USA. 13 and 3. As the 1 0 is downstairs for ball two. This is game number two against Japan, who is 0 and 1 in their international series. Gentry here start struggling here in the first to command his pitches. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch, and that one finds the strike zone for strike number one. Miyamoto taking his lead, and Gentry will check on over for him, but slides in safely. Two balls, one strike, <laughs> one out here in the first inning. Here's the 2-1. Again, that ball is downstairs for ball three. Second consecutive 3-1 count here for Gingery. And the 3-1 pitch is swung on and hit down the third base line, but just foul for strike number two. Looked to be just an inch or two foul there. It did there, and if that was fair, that might have been a run. You see the replay here. Just barely foul. Had a chance. Three balls, two strikes. Mayamoto on first base here with one out. And he'll check on over for him. And he's got him for out number two of the inning. Gingery with that fantastic check over move. And there's two outs in the inning and now no one on in the first. Nice job there by Gingery there being heads up and getting the guy out at first that was taking a big lead. Now with three balls and two strikes, Gingery can focus on the batter, Nakagawa, back in the windup. Here's the payoff pitch. That one's fouled. Looks like it went off the catcher, Grant Koch, and then rolled back towards the third baseline. Still two strikes. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. 0-0 zero, zero game in the first. Here's the 3-2. That one's hit sharply towards right center field. And that one will drop in for a base hit. Japan's first hit of the game. Dropping right in front of Travis Swaggerty, the center fielder. Right after Gingery, 
picks off a runner at first base. Japan gets a hit to get a guy right back on that bag. That'll bring up the designated hitter, Taishi Kusumoto. <clears throat> and Gingery checks on him, and that'll be out number three. The second out at first base there in the inning, and after the top of the first, the score is still tied 0-0. Zero to zero. Look at the replay here. Quick release there from Gingery. Jab step and a throw. Excellent play there. And after the top of the first, we're tied 0-0. Zero to zero. We're going down to Leverett Ball, the sideline reporter, here for a quick update. Hello, everyone. Leverett Ball here at Campanelli Stadium as Team USA takes on Japan. Now, we just finished the top half of the first inning as Steven Gingery was able to record two pickoffs at first base and get out of the inning with no runs allowed. We'll see what Team USA can do with their at-bats in the bottom half of the first. We'll have all your coverage of tonight's game on Bridgewater Community Access. Stay tuned. We're going through here the USA starting batting lineup. Leading off, playing center field is Travis Swaggerty. Batting second, Nick Madrigal, the second baseman. Playing right field, batting third, Steele Walker, the catcher, batting cleanup, Grant Koch, the designated hitter, batting fifth, Seth Beer, Andrew Vaughn, batting sixth, playing first base, batting seventh, move Jeremy like Ironman, the third baseman, batting eighth is Jake McCarthy, he'll be playing left field, and batting last, Caden Grenier, the shortstop. Right here, there are USA trying to get some runs here early. And the defense for Japan has the starting pitcher, Masada Morishita, playing pitcher. The catcher is Horiki Obata, playing first base, Kita Nakagawa. The second baseman is Haruki Takimura. The third baseman is Kobayashi, the shortstop, Miyamoto. And here is the leadoff man, Travis Swaggerty. Takes the curveball for strike number one in the bottom of the first inning. No balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed for strike number two. Healthy hack there from Swaggerty. You know, Swaggerty here being a leadoff guy trying to get on to start a, uh, an early run support here for Gentry after making two pickoff throws. No balls, two strikes. Here's the 0-2. Curveball outside for ball one. Swaggerty comes from Mandeville, Louisiana. Goes to South Alabama where he is a sophomore. Here's the 1-2 pitch. That'll be outside to knot things up at two. Swaggerty having himself a good international series so far, batting 375, three doubles. Here's the one two. That one's chopped foul. Defensive swing there from Swaggerty. Looked to ride up on his hands there. the 2-2. Two, two. That one's inside. Gets past the catcher, Hiroki Obata. For ball three. Yeah. 
Three balls, two strikes. It's the leadoff man. Here's the payoff pitch. That'll be outside, and the USA has their first base runner with their first batter as Swaggerty gets on first with a free pass. Yeah, that's a good way to start here for your USA. Be patient up at the plate. Here, and that paid off with a leadoff walk. Exactly. We saw Swaggerty go down there. No balls and two strikes, and he still fought, fought back. Didn't swing at bad pitches. Was able to draw the walk. That'll bring up Nick Madrigal, the second baseman for Team USA. Digs in here with nobody out. Swaggerty at first base. The check over is no good. We saw Gingery have an excellent pickoff move using his left arm here. The first pitch and squaring up to bunt but pulling it back is Madrigal. Ball one. Here's the 1-0. That one's hit hard down the third baseline, but foul for strike number one. Masato Morishita is the starting pitcher for Japan. This is his first start in the international series. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch, and Madrigal squares up to bunt, but the ball's foul. Hiroki Obata gets his hand on it in foul territory. That'll be strike number two. And in the first inning, we've seen both teams attempt to use small ball already. And neither team has had a runner past first base just yet. One ball, two strikes. Checking on over for Swaggerty, but he slides in safely again. <laughs> and another check over. Hey, you've Swaggerty seen both teams, slower. just like you said, um, Ben, at the start at the, at actually in the first inning after Gentry there um, made the last out, that both pitchers really um, have been throwing over and not allowing the other team uh, to have uh, big leads at first base. Here's the one, two, and that one's hit towards right field. That'll drop down into the stands for a foul ball and still two strikes. Here's And Nick Magrigal here now just protecting on that one-two count there and fouls it off. Magrigal a sophomore at Oregon State. There's the one-two. That'll be low for ball two. Madrigal came into tonight batting 256 with a homer and 11 hits. Here's the 2 2. Swings on that one and sends it down the third baseline, but again, that's a foul ball. And staying tough with two is Nick Madrigal. Madrigal here having a good at bat here. Keep fighting off those pitchers there. Eventually, he's going to get when he's going to want to hit. Morishita has now thrown 13 pitches, still yet to record an out here in the first. There's the 2-2, and that one's chopped foul back again towards the right field stands. Still two strikes on Madrigal. It's now four foul balls off Madrigal's bat.
Here's the 2-2 again. Swaggerty is off, and that ball is hit towards the second baseman. Swaggerty is safe at second, but Madrigal is thrown out at first base. That'll be out number one of the inning, making the play Haruki Takamura. That's a big play there with that hit and run there, allowing him not to get doubled off there. Exactly right on what was most likely a hit and run there by Team USA. Swaggerty off on the pitch, and because of that, he's able to get in safely for Takamura. He can even flip the ball towards second base on normally a very routine play and normally a routine double play. <clears throat> But now Swaggerty on second base here with one out. The new batter, Steele Walker. Here's the first pitch to Walker. He watches that downstairs for ball one. We're right here now with a runner at scoring position here. Walker trying to get in the first runs of the game here, trying to get on an early lead. Walker batting 397 to the first 16 games. 1-0 is sent towards left field, high into the air, getting under it is Kyra Shimedi. And he makes the play for out number two of the inning. That'll bring up the catcher, Grant Cook. Cook batting 393, two homers, one double, eight runs scored and eight runs driven in so far in this international series. Digging in here with two outs and a runner on second base. Hoping to break the tie early here in the bottom of the first inning. Here's the first pitch. He watches that for strike one in the outside corner. Swaggerty takes his lead off of second. Morishito sets, here's the pitch. That'll be inside, ball one. One ball, one strike here with two outs in the bottom of the first inning. Travis Swaggerty is the runner at second base. Grant Cook is the batter. Here's the 1-1. Swaggerty is moving on the pitch, but he stops. Cook swings and misses for strike number two. So we see here, Swaggerty off on the pitch, but looks to be just a fake steal as Cook is fooled by the off-speed pitch there. Out ahead of it. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch. That'll be outside for ball two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, runner on second base. Score still tied at zero. And calling time is Grant Cook. <laughs> Cook getting a little impatient there as he believed Morishida was taking too long. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. The off-speed pitch is low. For ball three, we'll get a full count here with two outs in the inning. Here now with the runner at second base, probably going here with a single here, probably will get the run to score. Here as Cook is trying to drive in the first runs of the game. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three on the loping curveball. That'll do it here in the first inning. Japan and USA still tied zero to zero 
after the first. We'll be back for the second after this. That'll bring up Kusumoto, Utsumi, and Tatsumi, the four, five, and six hitters for Japan in the top of the second inning. Kusumoto is the designated hitter, Utsumi, playing right field. Tatsumi is the center fielder. Now we have KO, the Brockton Rocks mascot here, joining the festivities for the USA-Japan game. He's racing a fan. It looks like he will not get his first win of the series, or I should say of the season. He's well, be well uh, behind the fan there. I'd say KO is probably the opposite of, it, of the, the Atlanta Braves and Mr. Freeze. <laughs> Steven Gingery, still the pitcher here for the second inning. First inning, he saw a strikeout, the first batter, then allowed a walk to Miyamoto, and then Nakagawa got a single, but the last two guys there, Gingery picked off. Of course, as a left-handed pitcher, it's quite a bit easier to pick off runners at first base than it would be for a right-handed pitcher. That's only because he's al already facing first. We actually saw two different styles of pickoffs on both of, of those. The first time, he brought his leg up and then just strided towards first base. The second time, he uh, had a jab step with his back foot, getting his foot off of the rubber and then threw from his back heel, which really just shows the power Gingery has. It definitely does there, and those were two huge outs there. On the could have potentially been the first runs of the game and a lead for Japan, so good job by him being aware. Now leading off for the second inning here. It's number seven, Taishi Kusumoto, designated hitter. Here's the first pitch, and he swings and sends that one towards right field, getting between first and second base, and that'll be a base hit on the first pitch of the inning. So the Japan here right now after a first inning where they only let, almost let up a run. They're quickly trying to get back here with a leadoff single. And that between Vaughn and Madrigal, really nothing either of them could do about that despite Vaughn's best efforts diving after the ball. That'll bring up Utsumi. He shows bunt early but pulls it back as the pitch was downstairs for ball one. Mm. Now Gingery has a runner on first base for the third time. The first two guys, of course, he picked off. Utsumi showing bunt again, but he pulls it back and sends a soft ground ball to Gingery at, at uh, the mound. He throws it to first and records out number one, but not before Kuzumoto can advance to second base. Good play there by Gentry there. Um, not trying to force the ball over the first base. You see the instant replay here. He grounds it, fakes the bunt, ends up swinging but a weak ground ball to Gentry. Vaughn actually dropped the ball, but the umpire said that it was on the transfer, so the out is good. It'll bring up Ryosuke Tatsumi. Tatsumi batting 250 in the series so far. Here's the first pitch. That'll be outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Runner on second base with one out here in the top of the second inning. Here's the pitch. And that'll be a strike on the inside corner. Tatsumi checking his swing but holding up. Nice pitch there by Gentry there. One ball, one strike here with one out. Top of the second inning. Here's the pitch. 
That one's just outside for ball two. Gingery has started two games for Team USA so far this summer. His earned run average is still 0, 0.00. Started two games, also appeared in a third. He's pitched 12 innings. Only allowed four hits before tonight. Here's the 2-1. That's inside for ball three. Of course, the two hits he has allowed so far tonight make that total go up to six. Three one count. Here's the pitch, and that swung on and missed on the fastball for strike two. Good pitch by Gentry there, there on a three one count, knowing that he had to get a strike there. Nice job by him. That'll bring on a full count here to Utsumi. Here's the payoff pitch. That one's downstairs, and Utsumi gets on with the walk. You know, here now with two guys on here, Japan is threatening here for the first time today to score. They'll bring out Ryu Kobayashi. Kobayashi goes to Fuji University in Japan. This is his first appearance, his first plate appearance of the series so far, of course, for Japan. This is just game two. Well, USA has al already played 16 games. Here's the first pitch, and that swung on and hit towards Gingery, who bobbles it, picks it up, and throws it to first base to get out number two. But both runners will advance. And Team Japan now has runners on second and third here with two outs in the second inning. You know, that would have been a big play there to double him off there, but the pitcher fumbles with the ball as soon as he gets it. And it's not allowed to throw at the second base, but takes the safe bet and throws at the first for the second out. Interesting fact here, Team USA has recorded five outs, and four of them were when Gingery threw the ball to first base. Two outs, here's the first pitch, and that one is in there for strike one. The new batter, Hiroki Obata. Obata is the catcher for Team Japan. Oh, 0-1 count, two outs, runners on second and third. Here's the pitch. That one's low for ball one. Gingery has now reached the 30 pitch mark here in just the second inning. Here's the 1-1, one, one, and that one swung and hit towards third base. Fielding cleanly and throwing to first and getting the out is Jeremy Ironman. That'll be out number three. Team Japan gets runners on second and third base, but cannot score. And this score is still tied at zero here after the top of the second inning. Definitely a nice play there here. by the third baseman. With a nice stop there. He's got the ball there off the bounce and just threw it on the first there. Great play by the third baseman there for the third out. Not only did we see an excellent, an excellent display of leather there by Ironman, but also a very, very strong throw on, on the run. Absolutely, and I think that's definitely what the scouts are coming to see today, some, some of those plays like that. Coming up for Team USA, we have Seth Beer, the designated hitter, Andrew Vaughn, the first baseman, and Jeremy Ironman, the man that just made that play at third base, batting third in the inning. And taking the mound again for the second inning is Masada Morishita. He is yet to allow a hit.
Seth Beer, the first batter. Plays both infield and outfield. Goes to Clemson where he is a sophomore and comes from Suwannee, Georgia. And she now comes up to the plate as we are about to begin the bottom of the second inning. Here now steps up to the plate. Morishita getting ready to start off the second inning. <laughs> First pitch of fastball is high and inside. For ball one. Is the Japanese pitchers here so far here today um, a very slow release, and I'm sure that's difficult for the batter. And the 1-0, be in there for strike one, Beer. Thought that may have been inside as he tried to frame that pitch. 1 ball, 1 strike here to Seth Beer. He battles that one off towards the left field stands for a foul ball and strike two. Beer batting 277 through the first 16 games where he's played in all 16, started 15. Has a home run and 13 runs driven in. Here's the one, two. That one hits Beer on the arm. He'll take first base. A good way to start. Lead off here in the second, getting a first guy on by a hit pitch. Yeah, hopefully USA takes advantage of that. You see a replay here. Looks like that pitch hit just above his elbow where he had a protection there. That's always unfortunate when you have something to protect yourself and it hits just barely above it. Yeah. For sure, now he puts on the uh, wrist brace there. Beer takes his lead, and Andrew Vaughn will be the new hitter for Collegiate Team USA. First pitch to Vaughn. He squares up to bunt, but pulls it back. Kobayashi running in from third base. One ball, no strikes. And he'll check on over on Beer, but he gets back in standing up. Vaughn already has his jersey dirty from a first inning dive at the ball where ended up being a base hit for Team Japan. Here's the 1-0. That one's just inside for ball two. Although Hiroki Obata Seemed a little uncertain of that call as he kept that pitch framed there for an extra second. Two O count. Here's the pitch, a curveball downstairs for ball three, and Vaughn will mo most likely have the red light here. Good pitch there. By the Japanese pitcher there. Unfortunately, it was a curveball low in the dirt, now to a 3 0 count. There's the 3 0. Taking it for a strike is Vaughn. Will now face a 3 1 count. Vaughn entered this evening batting 2 12 in 52 at-bats. He's played in 15 games, started 14, has a home run, seven RBIs. Here's a 3-1, he fouls that one back into the stands above the netting for strike number two. Morishita here now, um, early in this game. They're doing a nice job of commanding his pitches. I'll be here in the second, struggling a little here. 
Full count now on Vaughn. And he'll check on over at the runner on first base. Seth Beer, who again gets back with ease. Sometimes, of course, on a full count, the runner can just expect that the pitcher is going to go towards home plate and it makes it easier for the pickoff attempt. But Beer on his toes there. There's the payoff pitch. Beer is off, and that one's hit sharply towards second base. For the first out is made, and then Beer is doubled off. And a line drive right at Takamura. Hard hit ball there by Vaughn, but right at the second base with Haruki Takamura as we see the instant replay here. Fastball is hit sharply at second base, but as you see there, Takamura just slide steps to his right, and at that point, Beer, who is off on the pitch, had no chance at getting back to first base. And now two outs in the bottom of the second inning here for Team USA. Tough play there. Um, it's a line drive right to the second baseman there. But fortunately, he catches it and throws it on to first for the second out. First base to Jeremy Ironman is in the dirt for ball one. Off-speed pitch there from Morishita. You know, unfortunately, in that situation, there's nothing you can do when you're the runner on first base. Um, you see a line drive there. Obviously, don't know if it's going to go over the second base and head. You run, but unfortunately, by the time he caught it, there was no turning back to first. Here's the 1-0. That one's hit high into the sky. Getting under it is the catcher, Hiroki Obata. And he'll make the play for out number three. Obata got to his spot in plenty of time there. We're going to go down back to Laver Leverett Ball here. Who has an, an interview. Leverett. Hello, everyone. Leverett Ball here with Bridgewater Cable Access. I'm now joined by Robert Lewis Jr. from the base program. Now, first off, Robert, would you like to tell me a little bit about your program and uh, the main goal of it? Yeah, we, we started about five years ago really investing in young people in the inner city, ensuring that baseball was an asset for them to be successful on and off the field. We're looking to build great citizens and providing them the tools for them to be successful. I know also um, you do a lot of mentoring as well. You mentioned you stress uh, academics in addition to baseball. Um, you know, how important are some of the life lessons that uh, kids can learn playing sports? It's all about life lessons. Sports builds teams, discipline, in our environment, at our facility, in Rockbury and on Boston. But it's all about giving them the tools to be successful. It's, um, teaching them what they can do to participate in the work world. Um, investing that young and young women can get all of what they need so they can finish high school, go to college, and get a job. Well, that sounds great. And, you know, I can say personally, you know, I learned a lot of life lessons playing baseball growing up. My major league career didn't exactly pan out, but... Uh, but regardless, though, what, what has been the most rewarding part of uh, being involved in this program? I think it's a big thing. It was a couple years ago when we added girls to the program, which was, I just think, something we needed to do. In just over four years, we've had over 180 kids go to college, over like 60 kids go to college, room, board, and tuition, and we're continuing to build a new narrative that getting in into college and graduating college has to be the new norm for kids in cities in America. Robert, that, that sounds awesome, and uh, thanks for everything you do with the program. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Appreciate brother. it. All right, thanks. Man. Very interesting interview there. Thanks, Leverett. The uh, base program sounds very great. Getting 180 kids to college, that's impressive. New better here, Haruki Takamura, Team Japan. Here's the first pitch. Swung on and missed by Takamura for strike one. Jindry back out for his third inning of work. He's now thrown 32 pitches. 0-1 is fouled off towards the third base stands going just over the Brockton dugout, but looks like it avoided all of the fans. Here Gentry here now trying to get a 1-2-3 inning here. This is pitch count starting to get a little high. No balls, two strikes. Takamura. 
The waste pitch is outside and low for ball one. Here's the one, two. Again, that'll be outside and low for ball two. Another waste pitch from Gingery. Gingery again is a sophomore at Texas Tech from Huntington Beach, California. She's allowed two hits so far through two innings. No runs yet. Here's the 2-2. Swung on hit back to Gingery. He'll clean it up and throw it towards first base for out number one. Another out recorded by the pitcher. Nice pit job there by Gentry there. You usually don't see a lot of hits back to the pitcher. And uh, so far today we've seen a lot and he's done a really nice job. Here's the, uh, here's the replay. You see a hard hit line drive or ground ball back at Gingery. Who fields it cleanly and throws it to first base, you know. Shades of Greg Maddox there, an excellent defensive pitcher. First pitch, and that will be low for ball one to the new batter, Kyrie Shimada. Goes to Jobu University. Shimada struck out his first at bat. Shimada is the leadoff man for Team Japan. Here's the 1 0, squaring the bunt and pulling it back. That'll be in there for strike one. You know, and just on the talk there of uh, S. Greg, uh, Greg Maddox there, you know, we could see a lot of these kids uh, someday playing in the pros. So uh, it's definitely something the scouts are looking at uh, today, and he's really showing um, definitely his, dra his draft stock's going higher in the 2018 draft. So third pitch is outside for ball two. And, yeah, we saw 16 guys get drafted in the first round of the 2017 draft. 2-1 is hit softly. Grant Cook will pick it up and throw to first base, and they'll get him for out number two. Great job there by the catcher there. Pin the ball, throwing on the first there for the second out. That'll be now the sixth out out of just eight that have been recorded by either the catcher or the pitcher, and that doesn't even include the strikeout in the first inning. Now batting Takesha Miyamoto goes to Narigakuin University. He walked his first at bat and was then picked off. Shows bunt, pulls it back, but that'll be strike one. No balls, one strike, two outs here in the third inning. Pitch from Gendry. Sliders in there for strike two. Miyamoto really uh, bringing his hands up on that bat. Here with two strikes. He fouls that one off. Still two strikes. <laughs> now at 43 pitches, Gingery looking to get out of the third early here after two quick outs. Now with an 0-2 count to Miyamoto. Here's the pitch. That one's upstairs for ball one. Here's the 1-2. That'll be outside for ball two. To even the count up at two. Injury has walked one batter this evening, and it was this batter. So he grounds that one towards the Japanese dugout. Still two strikes. Miyamoto batting 200 so far in the 
the series. Here's the 2-2. Swung on a hit again. Back to Ginger who stumbles but gets up and throws out the runner. Another excellent play by Gingery, and that will retire the side here after the top of the third inning. Team Japan and Team USA still tied at zero. We have another interview with Leverett. We'll send it down to him just now. Leverett. Hello, everyone. Leverett Ball here. I'm now joined by Ryoka Sieta who actually sang the national, uh, Japanese National Anthem before today's game. Now, first, Ariga, how exciting was it for you to get to not only come to the game, but have the honor of singing the Japanese National Anthem? You know, first of all, I am so honored to be here. You know, like, cause, like it's, for them, it's a way, you know, game. Game sports should be, like, really, like, you know, like, sharing experience and stuff. Like, you know, spirit and stuff. But it's, yeah. I, I can feel, like, their nerves, you know. But then I just wanted to be here and like give them the energy through my performance. So I'm so honored. I'm so honored to be here. Definitely, definitely. And uh, that was pretty impressive with some of the high notes you're able to hit. I feel like I would hurt myself if I tried to hit those notes. <laughs> but uh, also, I know before the interview you told me you're a baseball fan. Um, do you go to a lot of games? Do you go to Sox games, anything like that? Uh, what's your background going to baseball games? Okay, so um, because of my dad is a huge baseball fan. So that's why I learned the rules, all the things from yeah. him. But when I came here back um, back in 2009, I was living the apartment right book, like uh, behind the stadium. So like we kind of like, get together when I was school, get together and watch the like you know Sox game. But like it's just like not like we we didn't really buy the tickets, but like, that's what happened. So it was really close to me though, because I was literally living the apartment behind the uh, like the uh, stadium, so yeah. And also, uh, I know you told me you uh, attended Berkeley College of Music here in Boston. You've had some pretty cool opportunities since then. Would you like to tell me about those? So my first professional job in the States was I got a speaking role um, in the Hollywood movie called Sea of Trees. And I got um, to work with Matthew McConaughey um, in the scene. Um, and then a wonderful, wonderful um, Gus Van Sant. He's the director. Um, he's very wonderful um, director who directed um, uh, Good Will Hunting and Milk. So, and um, I do a lot of musical theater. And then because role I acted in Boston was um, Mimi Marquez in Rent. Yeah. So. That's awesome. And do you have other experience um, singing specifically at, at sporting events, singing in National Anthem? No, this is their first time for me. So. Well, I couldn't tell because you did so well. But hey, Rios, thank you so much for your time. It was great meeting you and great job with the National Anthem today. Thank you so much. Back up in the booth, the batter now is Jake McCarthy. One ball, two strikes here from McCarthy. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. That one's inside McCarthy. Says it hits him, and he heads on down to first base with a hit by pitch. Good way to start here if you're the United States here. Um, have not gotten a hit yet today, so it's um, it's definitely something um, to help to get the first runner on here in the third and possibly get their first hit of the game. Gonna bring up Caden Grenier. Taking in here with no outs and a runner on first base. Grenier batting 125 with one home run. A solo shot. Here's his first pitch. He squares the bunt. It'll be a foul ball. So that pitch was close to hitting him. It looked like it hit him. I thought it did as well. Maybe of because course. maybe he had the bunt, the bunt we'll see on. See the replay here. It looks like it did no. hit off the bat. It hit off the bat. Foul ball. <laughs> Morishita now at 40 pitches. Here in the bottom of the third. 
Checks on over at McCarthy. Gets in easily. Grenier goes to Oregon State. Comes from Henderson, Nevada. Sophomore. Here's the 0-1. He squares the bunt and sends that into the air, but it'll drop foul before Akita Nakagawa can track it down. Here, Kading, Kading Grenier here trying to move that guy over from first base there, but unfortunately not able to put the bunt down. Now two strikes on Grenier. 0-2 count, no outs. McCarthy taking his lead off of first base. Swung on and missed. A big swing there by Grenier, but he goes down hacking for out number one. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Travis Swaggerty. Swaggerty walked his first at bat. Made it all the way to second base before the first inning ended. Swaggerty, a sophomore at South Alabama, comes from Mandeville, Louisiana. First pitch of Swaggerty is low outside for ball one. Ooh, the man's still there on first base. Unfortunately, Grenier, they're not able to get the bunt down here, but now Swaggerty here now has the job to do to move him over and make sure they get their first hit of the game here. 1-0 count. Hit high into the air, but foul down the third baseline into the stands. Almost caught by a young fan. He picks up the souvenir. Shows his friends. It's always nice to see. That'll be strike one on Swaggerty. One ball, one strike, one out. Here's the pitch. That's hit towards left field, and that will get down for the first hit of the ball game for Collegiate Team USA. Nice piece of hitting there by Swaggerty. They're hitting it out there to left field. Their first hit today, and now the runners, uh, the first and second here. Bring up Nick Madrigal, the second baseman. Madrigal grounded to second base, his first at bat. For those just joining us, the game is still tied 0-0. Zero to zero. Only three combined hits, and Team USA just got their first one. USA is in white, Japan is in blue. Nick Madrigal is the batter here with one out, and runners on first and second. First pitch is sent towards left field. That'll get through. McCarthy is coming home. Here comes the throw, and he'll get in safely standing up. And the tie has been broken, Team USA takes the one to zero lead. Nice piece of hitting there, getting that RBI first run of the game, and now USA's up, one nothing. Nick Madrigal getting the RBI single there. That'll bring up Steele Walker. You see the instant replay here. McCarthy on his horse that entire time. Rounds third base and ends up scoring. Didn't even need to slide. Walker popped up to left field his first at bat. Entered tonight batting 397 with two home runs, four doubles. First pitch is an off-speed pitch outside for ball one. One no count. That one's chopped foul down the right field line. 
Strike one. One ball, one strike, one out. Runners on first and second again for Collegiate Team USA. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed by Walker for strike two. Here at USA up here already, one nothing here. Japan does not want to get down more than one here in third with how good Gentry is pitching out on the mound. Walker goes to Oklahoma where he's a sophomore. Comes from Prosper, Texas. There's the one two, swung on and hit foul again down the third base line. That one will roll all the way down the line until Utsumi scoops it up. One two count here with one out in the third inning. Here's the pitch. That'll be strike three. So it was in the dirt, but since there was a runner on first base and the base was occupied, Walker could not advance on the dropped third strike call. You know, they're unfortunately not be able to get a hit there, but the runners do advance. So with a single here now, possible two runs could score. Grant Cook, now the batter for Team USA. As you see the instant replay here. Curveball in the dirt. Walker chased it, but as the ball gets away, Madrigal and Swaggerty are able to advance. As you see now, runners on second and third. Swaggerty taking his lead off of third base. Here's the first pitch to Cook. Swung on and missed for strike number one. Another off-speed pitch there by Morishita. Cook batting 393. Here's the 0-1. That'll be outside and low for ball one. Morishita now at 53 pitches, just the third inning. You see he's now thrown 32 strikes and 21 balls. He gets strike two on Cook, as we saw Swaggerty fake an attempt to steal home, as we also saw him do at second base earlier in this game. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Swaggerty is the runner on third base. Madrigal is the runner on second base, and Cook is batting. Here's the one-two pitch. Upstairs for ball two. Here's now a 2-2 count here with two outs with runners on second and third here. The U United States is trying to widen their lead. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on. Here's the pitch. That one's outside and low for ball three. We'll have a full count. Cook is tied for the lead in home runs on Team USA with Steele Walker, both of which have two. Here's the payoff pitch. That's inside. And Team USA has now loaded the bases here in the bottom of the third inning. And with two outs and the bases loaded, the batter now is Seth Beer. Beer was hit by a pitch, his first at bat. Of course, if that happens again, USA will extend their lead. Yeah. 
And that ball gets by everything, but holding up is Swaggy. I feel like he could have scored there on that pass ball there, kind of misjudged where the ball was going to go. I think what happened there is that he knows that the backstop has a cement That's wall true. below the screen, and he assumed that the ball was going to hit that cement. Instead, it ended up hitting that screen and just plopping down onto the dirt, but by the time he'd already held up, it may have been too late, he thought, to get home. Of course, it would have been close, I think. It definitely would have. That'll be ball one here to Beer. There's the 1-0, and that's hit sharply towards first base. Scooping it up is Nakagawa, and he tosses it to the pitcher for out number three. And that will retire the side. USA loads it up after scoring one, but cannot extend their lead any further. It'll end the third inning here. Do up for Team Japan. Nakagawa leading off. Kusamoto batting second, and Utsumi batting third. You see the replay here. A hard hit ball by Beer. Nakagawa playing very far away from first base despite it being a left-handed batter. And Morishita doing a good job covering the bag there from the pitcher's mound. Definitely nice play there by the first baseman there. Did not allow any other runs to score. So great job by him. Absolutely, that was a big play for Team Japan. Of course, with the bases loaded, that hit, if everyone is in their natural positions, is probably two runs. Instead, this game is still one to zero. Both teams now have two hits in this game. Injury back out on the mound for his fourth inning of work. As we are close to starting up the fourth. We mentioned how starting pitcher for Japan, Morishita, is nearing 60 pitches already. Well, Jinjuri, after three, is throwing 47. Good entry here. Trying to get a quick one, two, three inning here as he's at 47 pitches. Because he had a quick last inning, and that's part of the reason why that his uh, pitch count's not over 50. First batter, Team Japan, Keita Nakagawa. It's the first pitch, and that one is outside for ball one. Nakagawa had a base hit his first at bat, but was picked off by Jinjuri. There's the 1-0. That one's hit down the third baseline, but foul for strike number one. Ironman gave chase there. One ball, one strike. Here in the top of the fourth inning, Gendry hoping to maintain that one nothing lead they just got. That ball is tattooed down the right field line, but foul. So it's just past the fans, or I should say the stands in right field. It's a little bit those kids were walking down. Um, Very close to them, yeah. Yeah, walking down the stands there, and all of a sudden they look up and there's the ball right there. Thank God nobody got hurt. Always got to be aware at the ballpark. One ball, two strikes to Nakagawa. That one's defended off into the netting. Still two strikes. One-two count. 
That one's hit up the middle, just past Ginger's glove and past the diving effort by Grenier. Good try there by hit. Grenier. Second hit of the game for Nakagawa. And the first time we've seen the ball go up the middle and not get caught by the pitcher there, Ginger. You see the replay here. Fastball that is hard hit. Athletic dive from Grenier, but both he and Gendry unable to come up with the ball. Now batting Taishi Kusamoto. First pitch he sees is inside for ball one. You know, here with the lead off uh, hit there for Japan now, as they're already down one nothing in this game here. Trying to get themselves back in, and the way that Gentry's pitching right now, um, it's going to be very difficult to get a run off of them. Kusumoto one for one today with a base hit. That one is hit hard towards right field. That will get down and get back to the wall. Walker picks it up and throws it in. The runners will hold up at third and second. Nakagawa thought about rounding third towards home there, but ended up staying put. Here's the instant replay. Fastball is hit very hard towards right field. Got to the wall in a hurry. Walker with a good strong throw back to Madrigal. Holds the runner at third base. Only no way to get it in there um, by the outfielder. Um, there, making sure that run didn't score there. As that run looked like he was going to score, but was held up. Just like that, Japan has runners on second and third with no outs here in the fourth inning just after Collegiate Team USA took their first lead of the game. The new better is Taiju Utsumi. First pitch he sees is in the dirt for ball one. We're here now with runners on second and third here. Drenchery, this is probably the first time today where he struggled in an inning. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch. That one's hit softly up the middle, but that will score a run as it's still a base hit. Madrigal is able to make the play, but his throw is off target. Andrew Vaughn had to get off the base, and that allows Utsumi to get on with a single, and the run scores. Well, that's a tough play there for the second baseman to make as we're looking at the replay. Here the ground ball is pretty much right up the middle there. A nice stop there by the second baseman. Just unable to throw it accurately to first base. And really only half a swing there by the batter. So he was kind of just defending the plate there. But his speed, he's able to get on as we now see Hiroki Obata. First pitch he sees is in there for strike one, and there is some action in the USA bullpen. Looks to be Tim Kate, number 14. Kate is a Yukon product. Here's the 0-1. That one's inside for ball one to Utsumi. One one count. One is on the corners. Allen's hit softly towards Vaughn at first base. He picks it up and heads on down to first. Makes the tag on Tatsumi. Good play there by the first baseman there, getting that out. There's the runner. Could have scored and Japan could have taken the lead, but the third base coach told the batter not for the for the man on base not to go. You see there, Vaughn scoops it up. Glances quickly at third base before making the tag and getting into the throwing motion. Staying at third base was Kusumoto. Japan now has runners on second and third here with one out in the inning. 
Haruki Takamura is the new batter for Team Japan. Actually, Ryo Kobayashi. Quick meeting at the mound between Grant Cook and Stephen Gendry. One is on second and third here with one out. High ball game. Here's the pitch to Kobayashi, and that one in the dirt for ball one. We're now with runners here at second and third here. Now Gentry's trying to soften the blow here in the fourth, trying not to give up the lead. Here's the 1 0. That one's outside for ball two. Kobayashi goes to Fuji. It's one of the older players on this team, born May 27th, 1995. 2-0 is outside for ball three. Three balls, no strikes. There is a base open. Here with one out, top of the fourth inning. That one's in there for strike one. Kusumoto is the runner on third base, Utsumi. At second base, Kobayashi is the batter. Here's the three one pitch. That one's inside. And Kobayashi is on the first base with a walk. Your Gentry really struggling here in the fourth. It looks like that might be the day for Gentry. Got a meeting on the mound here. It appears it will not be. Just having a talk. You know, sometimes um, when you can tell there's a pitching change, the uh, manager comes out very slow to the mound. And he starts walking out and he puts his left or right hand out. And I can see why Ben there that you would maybe think that he was going to get out, but he got very, very slowly out to the mound. With the bases loaded here and one out. We're coming out to confirm a play. Of course, at the same time, it could be just to get some extra time for Kate out in the bullpen. She is still warming up here. Got to think that maybe with one hit here, Kate may be coming in. Batter is Hiroki Obata. Catcher for Team Japan. He steps in here with one out and the base is loaded. A tie ball game. Here's the first pitch. That one's hit foul down the right field line. Back into the seats. Up on the concourse. One lucky fan. Pretty happy he got that ball. No balls, one strike. One out, base is juiced. That one's hit towards right field. Walker getting under it. It will most likely be a play at the plate. He makes the out, throws it towards home. And sliding in safely is Kusumoto. And Japan is taking the lead here. A nice throw, throw by the outfielder. They're unfortunately not able to get him out there. And Japan has the lead. You see the replay here. 
Ball hit just far enough towards Walker in right field. Walker catches it, gets it on his throwing hand, and the accurate throw, however, just a bit too short. Cook just barely misses the tag there as the runner there, Kusumoto, slides in on the outside of the plate to avoid that tag. Just barely getting in and taking the 2-1 to one lead in the top of the fourth inning. And the bases now see runners on second and third here with two outs. That one's tapped towards the first baseman who will make the play. That's Andrew Vaughn. That'll be the third out of the inning. The team USA gets out of it with runners on second and third, but not before Team Japan gets two runs in this ballgame. Now with a two to one lead for Team Japan after the top of the fourth. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth just after this. The fourth inning at Campanelli Stadium. Team Japan leads Collegiate Team USA two to one. Here in the fourth. The new batter is Andrew Vaughn. Here with USA now down two to one here. Gonna quickly try to find themselves back in the game. Vaughn is 0 for 1. He had that steaming line drive at the second baseman that resulted in a double play. First pitch he sees is outside for ball one. Swung on and missed. For strike one. To knock things up at one. One one pitch. Drops in there. Strike two. You know, we're only in the bottom of the fourth inning here, but this game has definitely been as advertised. Haven't seen any mistakes for either team so far. You know, I think that's what you definitely see at this level um, with such great players. One two is swung on in, missed for strike three. That'll be the first out of the inning. A third strikeout of the day for Morishita. I'll bring up Jeremy Ironman, the third baseman for Team USA. Ironman popped up in his first at bat. Here's the 0-1. That's it fouled down the right field line for strike number two. And the 0-2 pitch. Inside almost hits the batter Ironman, but Curves in for just being a ball. One ball, two strikes to Ironman here with one out. That pitch is hit down towards the shortstop. Scooping it up is Miyamoto. He throws it towards first base off the hop. Gets the out. Nakagawa making the play at first base. And that'll be the second out of the inning. Nice play there by the shortstop. Looking at the replay here to the first baseman. A nice stop there by the first baseman. Kind of a weird hop there, however, yeah. just uh, a little further than those in-between hops that most often mess things up for the first baseman. He's able to bend his knees and get low to make yep. that a little bit easier for him. As Jake McCarthy is the new batter now. McCarthy is a sophomore at Virginia. Comes from Scranton, Pennsylvania. First pitch he sees is outside for ball one. Gotta wait till they take it. <laughs> Scranton, of course, being most famous for uh, being the home to the TV show The Office. Yes. No, not yet. It's the 1 0. It's low for ball two. I will. 
Here with now the pitch count only being almost being 70 pitches here. This Japanese pitcher is throwing a lot of pitches. Here in just the fourth inning, exactly. 2-0 is going to be in there for strike one, just painting the inside corner. There's the 2-1. That one's in there for strike two. Morishita so far here today really has had great command of his pitches, um, just like Gentry. And, uh, you know, it's been very much a defensive game uh, here tonight. The 2 2 is swung on and missed on the outside corner for strike three and out number three as Japan gets out of that inning. 1 2 3. Japan still leads this game 2 to 1 after four innings. We have another interview with our on field reporter, Leverett Ball. Leverett? I'm joined now by Bryce Tucker. Now, first off, Bryce, how exciting is this to have the chance to uh, suit up for Team USA, represent your country? Uh, it's a great experience, like you said, to be able to represent your country and uh, just really taking it all in while I have the chance to. Definitely, and uh, I know you guys currently trail Japan now. Um, how can you guys just bounce back and uh, get some runs on the board and take the win? Uh, we're going to have uh, to tack some hits together here. I mean, we put together a couple good at-bats, but we're just going to need to uh, drive it in and keep pitching good like we have all game. So. I know also you're an alum of the Rocks. This is not your first time at camp in LACM. How nice is it to be back? It's great to be back here and play under it's on, huh? the lights back at Camp in LA with the great fans here. I'm sure, you know, some of the obnoxious interns you don't miss. No, I'm just kidding. They're great. They're great. <laughs> also, so you play your college ball at UCF. Uh, how has that prepared you for uh, your experience with Team USA? Uh, it's prepared me a lot. We have a good coaching staff at UCF with Love Lady. And uh, really allowed me to come here and strive. All right, my last question to you. Sarah, share a first name with one of baseball's best, Bryce Harper. Now, I know you have some pretty long hair. Who has better flow, you or Harper? Uh, definitely me, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, hey, Bryce, okay. thanks a lot for your time. The new pitcher is Tim Kate. Comes in here to relieve Stephen Gendry. Allowed two runs and five hits. Kate is a sophomore at UConn. Comes from Manchester, Connecticut. Kate actually pitched in relief just two days ago. That was at the Hartford Yard Goats Stadium. The Yard Goats are the AA affiliate of the Colorado Rockies. One of the stops on Collegiate Team USA's tour. About to start the top of the fifth inning here with Kate as the new pitcher. Kairi Shimadi is the leadoff man for Team Japan. He is the leadoff man in the lineup as well. Shimadi is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground ball to the catcher. Swings in, misses at the first pitch for strike one. Shimadi entered tonight batting 1,000. Went four for four in Team Japan's first game. It's now four for six, which of course is 
66-67. Shows bunt and pulls it back for ball one. You know, your Gentry out of the game here for USA as he pitched four innings and let up two runs. A solid start for him, but had a rough fourth inning, letting up two runs. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's hit foul. Of course, those two runs were the first two runs that Gingery has allowed so far through the first 17 games. He's been dominant. I think some of that has to do with his pickoff move that he displayed in the first inning as he picked off two runners at first base. One ball, two strikes. Hit to Shimada. Swung on and missed, but the ball is in the dirt. Shimada does advance toward first. He thinks he fouled it off. One plate umpire says, no, you did not. It'll be out number one as we see the instant replay here. Looks like that ball got by the bat. I don't think Shimada fouled it off. Since he decided not to run down towards first base, it was an easy tag there for Grant Cook to secure the strikeout for his pitcher, Kate. First pitch to Miyamoto was fouled back into the screen. Miyamoto is 0 for 1 today. He also walked. Here's the 0 1. That's in there for strike two. Tim K doing an excellent job so far. He had to throw a ball. Here's the 0 2. That's going to be in there for strike three and out number two. Two consecutive strikeouts here for Kate. Nice pitch here coming out of relief here for Kate. You're getting two straight strikeouts here. Two quick outs here in the top of the fifth. They'll bring up Keita Nakagawa. Nakagawa is two for two with two base hits. He also scored a run. First pitch he sees is inside. He backs away from the pitch for ball one. Here's the 1-0. Swung on and missed for strike number one. One ball, one strike, two outs. <clears throat> Japan leads by one. That pitch is just outside for ball two. Close call there. See, we have some scouts in the stands tracking Kate's velocity, among other things. Two one pitches outside for ball three. And I think it's definitely good exposure for a lot of scouts to come here and look at potential uh, draft picks one day, you know. A lot of these guys on this team uh, potentially could be drafted, and some of these guys in Japan here are going to play, probably play professionally and maybe possibly make their way to the United States. 3-1 is low and inside for ball four. It'll be a walk. First base runner allowed by Kate of the ball game. Of course, Japan is the home to a future superstar, Shohei Otani, who is too old to be playing in this game, but he, he should be coming over as soon as next year, I think. You know, I think you see a lot of these Japanese players now. Um, Ichiro, um, Tanaka, um, Darvish. You see some of these guys now. Uh, they're coming over when they're um, when they're a lot when they're 
in their mid to late 20s. And uh, it's definitely good that they have the experience where they can go right into a major league roster and be able to contribute right away instead of getting drafted when you're 18 years old and having to wait three or four years. <clears throat> No balls, one strike to the new batter, Kusamoto. So Kate has a much slower pickoff move than our, our first pitcher did. Yeah, Gentry there getting two guys um, in the first inning, and then ever since then really didn't see much action over there at first base, and I think he was just kind of sending a message early that you're not going to steal on me. So. And it worked. And it, and it definitely did work. No stolen bases <laughs> either. Here's the 0-1. Curveball stays up high for ball one. One ball, one strike here with two outs. The top of the fifth inning. Nakagawa is the runner at first base. Curveball is hit towards Vaughn at first. He picks it up and tags first base. For out number three, that'll do it here. At the top of the fifth inning. Score remains two to one with Team Japan in the lead. Two up for Team USA, the number nine hitter, Grenier, followed by Swaggerty, and then Madrigal. So we'll see an instant replay here. Two curveballs for a strikeout there. So we see the first one. Totally fooled the batter there as he backs away from the pitch, thinking it might hit him. Excellent pitches there by Tim Kate. Great command over that curveball. As I mentioned, Grenier, the leadoff man in the fifth, followed by Swaggerty and then Madrigal. As Team USA. Looks to tie this game up. This is the third to last game for Team, U Team USA versus anyone. The next game will be tomorrow at the Lacquer Park. And on July 17th, we'll wrap things up at Holman Stadium, both of which will also be against Team Japan. Now, I'll be taking over the play-by-play -play for the next four and a half innings. Here is now leading off here in the bottom of the fifth is number three, Kaden Grenier. This Morishita is still out there for Japan. We're going to now O pitch, and that will be a hit, and that will get over the head of the second baseman, and then we'll go into the gap, but it will stay as a single. As Japan quickly gets it in, and there will be a leadoff hit for USA. Here's there down by one run here in the bottom of the fifth. <laughs> Excellent piece of hitting there by Grenier. Takes the pitch on the, on the outside corner and sends it to opposite field. Doesn't try to do anything crazy with the pitch. Just takes it where the pitcher gave it to him. Gets on with a base hit. Travis Swaggerty's up the plate here now with a man on first base with nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. The Japan leading two to one. Swaggerty one for one. Base hit, he also walked. Now the first pitch with the bat is a bunt down the third base line, and he will be safe. Because now there will be a runner in scoring position at second. USA is threatening here in the bottom of the fifth. You see the instant replay here. Swaggerty waiting until the pitch was thrown to show bunt. And because of that, the third baseman Kobayashi was not able to get down the line in time to scoop up the ball and throw out Swaggerty. Nick Madrigal will be able to play here now as after that mound is at the pitcher's mound. 
between the catcher and the pitcher. USA here now trying to tie the game. There's action in the Japan bullpen. There'll be two guys out there working. Number 20 and 18. A throwing for Japan out there in the pen. You're now with the first baseman creeping up there, watching for the bunt. And then they will bunt now, and that will be foul. <clears throat> there is Itso Mashashi. He's warming up at number 20, Rio. How do you pronounce his last name there, Ben? I'd say it's Kuribayashi. Kuribayashi, okay. As Ben, you were very good by us, so I wanted to uh, give you a hand for the past four and, four and a half innings with those last names, because they are not easy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Go here now, O pitch, and he will not bunt. And that will be a ground ball of the second baseman. The second baseman will have it, but he will not double be doubled off as there will be now be runners in the corners. You're now with one out. What a terrific play there by Takamura. We'll see the instant replay here. That ball hit rather harshly, but also it goes off the lip there, and it really eats up Takamura as he has to field it on the inside of his chest, the opposite side of his glove. Still able to make it and utilize a spin move to throw towards second and get the out. There's now Steel Walker is up to play here now for USA with runners on the corners here with one out. But Japan's still leading two to one here. Because <clears throat> we've seen a very good defensive game tonight by both teams. Not a lot of mistakes. Absolutely, still no errors, but also more than that, we've seen a lot of very good plays whether it be by the starting pitcher, Gingery, or the second baseman there, Takamura. Mm -hmm. Go here now, Morishita here for really the first time really today since the second or third inning. He's really been in trouble here. And they will call time. And it will be a balk. And USA ties the game at two to two. After a balk there, usually you don't see many of them. Not only is that a balk, but that's the first mistake we've seen from either team today. It's the mental error there by Morishita. It's here now with a base hit now. United States can take the lead. You see the replay here. <clears throat> kind of some happy feet there. As his foot was already on the rubber, you're not allowed to move your feet. We're going to O pitch, and that will be a foul ball there for Walker. Is that runner will not advance. Here, a crazy way to tie the game here for the United States, but they will take it. Is that, as you said, Ben, is the first mistake we've seen all day from either side. And it, it waited until the fifth inning, but it's a costly one mm -hmm. as it tied up this ball game. It definitely is. And now we have a 0-1 count here on Steele. Walker. Open in there, and that will be a ground ball to the first baseman. The first baseman will have it. He'll step it on to first, but that runner will advance to third base. And so now I, I think the runner still would have scored on that hit there. But the big part now is that instead of possibly getting a double play on the ground ball to first base, the runner now is over at third base instead being Nick Madrigal. And also the game's now it's tied because of that mistake on that balk. Now it could prove costly here for Japan. Here is their, they have not had much offense today. 
Here is Grant Cook. Up at the plate here now. Grant Cook has a 393 batting average. Cook is 0 for 1. He also walked. Here on the first pitch of the at bat. That's swing and a miss there by Coach. Is it Couch or Cook? Cook. Cook. I, th I think I first said that when he was up. You did. I did. <laughs> no pitch in there, and that will be a ball outside. His last name does not look like Cook. It looks more like a, like a Couch or something like that. But that's how he spells it. <laughs> yeah. Can be pronounced all sorts of ways. I actually know someone with the same spelling, K-O-C-H, that pronounces it Koch. We'll pitch in there and that will be a strike call there as Cook there does not like it, but is now a one-two count here with two outs. Here USA trying to take the lead, trying to take back the lead. Here as they were up one nothing, but led up to make it two to one, but tied at two to two after a mistake by the pitcher. And with 81 pitches here, you gotta think, if there's a, if there's a, a good hit here by, by Cook, it scores a run, it could be the day for the starting pitcher here, Morishita. <laughs> that pitch was high, now back down to a 2-2 count. <laughs> here, Grant Cook, one of the big time hitters here for USA. Here now, O pitch, and that will be strike three called there. And after five innings, the score is now tied two to two. We'll be back here for the sixth. Is now will be here now with Leverett Ball with an interview. Hello everyone, Leverett Ball here. I'm now joined by the head coach, Dennis Lamita, from the Somerset Baseball Program. Now first off, can you tell me a little bit about your team and uh, what age group you coach? Uh, they're a 12U group. It's our all-star team for the Somerset Berkeley Towns. And we just finished competing in the state tournament, which we were unfortunately eliminated from, and now we have four to five other tournaments over the summer. So it's basically uh, wrap up from the spring to summer baseball. And, um, you know, how nice is it to be able to uh, bring your players uh, to come watch some Team USA baseball? How, how much can they learn from watching players at this level? Uh, they can learn a ton, and unfortunately in today's game, a, a lot of kids don't watch baseball anymore. So some of the mental side of the game, they don't see it. Um, so it makes our job harder. And also there's more to this than just coaching them on how to hit, how to throw, how to run, etc. A team building night like tonight, just having them hang out and be friends together, and that goes a long way with team chemistry, which helps on the scoreboard to get some wins. So. And also, do you have any uh, future Team USA players on your roster currently? I hope so, but that's up to them. Yeah. So, we'll see. Yeah, we have a good squad. They're talented kids, um, but more importantly, they're they're good kids that listen and work hard. So hopefully they. They have a successful career in the game, but more importantly, in life. Hey, thank you for your time. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Leverett, for the very nice interview. We're now getting ready here now to start the top of the sixth. Top of the sixth. Little pitch in there, and that will be a ball high. Little pitch in there, and that will be a ground ball. 
for now to start. And that'll be a swing and a miss there by number 23. You might need to pronounce this one, Ben. I believe it's Tatsumi. Tatsumi. Ryosuke? Sorry, what? The uh, the first name? Ryosuke. Oh, his first name's Ryosuke. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ryosuke Tatsumi. So thank you once again, Ben, with the names. Now an 0-2 count here now. The one on the other, swing and a miss. And that will be the second out of the inning. and that will be a strike call there. As Ryo Kobahashi is up to the plate here for Japan. Here a 1-0 count here. No pitch and that will be a ball high there for ball two. The game is tied here in the top of the sixth. With nobody on, it's 2-2. Two to two. And Tim Kate is still on the mound here for his second inning of work. <clears throat> yeah, a little pitch in there, and that will be a foul ball. That will land in the concourse here at Campanelli Stadium. And now a 2-1 count here now. Uncle Bahashi. Here as Tim Cates had a pretty good outing here for USA. You know, we'll pitch on a 2-1 count. That will be a strike call there. Now back now to a 2-2 count. You now Tim Cates trying to get a 1-2-3 inning here. He's pitched 24 pitches so far today. Now 2-2 two, two, oh, pitch there. And now will be strike three called there. A nasty breaking ball there from Kate. As you, as you saw it, the batter there, Kobayashi, oh. turned his back, thinking it was going to hit him in the back. Instead, it drops into the strike zone for strike three and out number three. Just here, Kobayashi looking at the pitch. He thinks it's going to hit him. Seems like it almost hits him there, but curves back in the zone. He didn't like it, but... Looks like a strike from up here. Sure did. Here, 
USA will be up here in the bottom of the sixth. With Seth Beer leading off here for USA. Here the Rocks here now trying to take a lead. Here in the bottom of the sixth. The Beers. score still tied two to two. Beer's 0 for 1. He grounded to first base. He was also hit by a pitch in the second inning. Right above the elbow. Of course, he has that elbow protection, but as you mentioned, it didn't Hits hit him it. right above where it is. Yeah, pitch, and that will be a ball in the dirt. There for ball one. Morishita still on the mound here for Japan. Who lasted a lot longer than Gentry. He's thrown 84 pitches so far here today in the sixth. We got an O pitch, and that'll be a nasty curve ball in there for a strike that will bounce off the catcher's knee. That flew a long way. After the hop. See the replay here. Hits the dirt, then hits the glove, and that, that thing went way into the air. Here now, 1-1 one, one count, swing, and a miss there by Beal. Here now, it will be a 1-2 count. Pitch and be a swing and a miss there at that nasty curveball there for the first out of the inning. Now at 87 pitches, Morishita still using his entire arsenal here with that nasty curveball to go, go along with his fastball. Andrew Vaughn now is up to play here now. And an O pitch in there, and that will be a ball outside. Vaughn is 0 for 2. He had that very hard line drive that resulted in a double play, and then he also struck out in the fourth. And an O pitch, and that will be a ball outside now to O count. They're now on Vaughn. Pitch and that will be a foul ball that will go over the press box level here at Campanelli Stadium. Here now a 2 1 count. Oh, pitch. That'll be a ball high now. Three balls, one strike. Pitch and that will be a ball in the gap. And it will get down and will bounce off the wall. And he will be standing up at second base for a one out double. Andrew Vaughn with an excellent display of opposite field power there. To see the instant replay here. That pitch of fastball was more on the inside of the plate, but he still mu muscled it over to right center field. Gets it all the way back to the wall and ends up on second base. And they will have a mound visit here for Japan.
Here now, Jeremy Ehrman. It's up of the play here now. With one out with a man on second base here on the top of the six. The score still tied, two to two. Little pitch in there and that will be a strike. Swing and a miss there by Ehrman. Now an 0-2 count. We're going on O pitch, and that will be strike three called there for the second out of the inning with that nasty curveball. See the replay here. 12 6 curveball that ends up right down the middle. Ironman completely fooled by the pitch there by Morishita. It's here now Jake McCarthy. Left fielder from the University of Virginia, number 31, Jake McCarthy. Morishita now nearing triple digits for his pitch total here in the sixth inning. A pretty long outing for him today based on his pitch count. We're going to O pitch, and that will be a foul ball that will bounce to the protective netting here behind Owen Blake. You're now with a man on second base here now with two outs. Oh pitch, and that will be a foul ball that will bounce into a sweep here at Campanelli Stadium. Unfortunately, they did not catch it. Here's still an 0-2 count here. Now, but McCarthy fighting the pitch off. Strike the recall there, and after six innings, the game's still tied, two to two. Oh, fans, it's now time for the Rock and Rocks wheelbarrow race. And I should test it from the base program at the PASE program. And now let's head now to Levered Ball with his interview. Right, we're about to go on. Hello, everyone. I'm joined now by Rocks outfielder Brendan Pierce. Now, Brendan, first off, how much fun is it to have a chance to watch uh, Team USA play at your home field? I mean, it's awesome. Uh, it's obviously a high talent level. I mean, a lot of these guys, I mean, guys on our team have played against and stuff. So it's cool to just see them out there and see see talent, especially from a country like Japan. You don't see that style of play very often and stuff. So it's very interesting to kind of see how, how different countries play the game. Sure, and uh, are there any guys on the rocks you could see maybe soon enough for the national team someday? Yeah, you know, I mean, we definitely have a handful of guys who have performed at a pretty elite level this year. So I can definitely see them. I mean, some of the guys, you, they could be out here right now and you would never notice they fit right in fine. I mean, it's that type, it's that, we have that type of high level competitors where I think they could, they could be okay at this level. So. Yeah, well, you know, I guess it's a dream to play for Team USA. I guess they lost my invite in the mail, but whatever. But, but uh, also, so I know you guys are having a great season at this point. How can you just keep the momentum going and uh, keep things, keep things moving? You know, just showing up every day with the right attitude and, and uh, enjoying each other. We got a really close team. We, we uh, like being around each other. So I think just showing up every day and having fun, I think, is a huge part of it. I mean, not letting, obviously, the stresses of the game get to you and just kind of uh, just enjoying every moment, enjoying your teammates and, and playing the game hard. Well, 
Uh, Brandon, thank you for your time. Best of luck the rest yeah. of the season. Thank you. Thank you, Leverett, with that interview with Steve Pierce of the Brooklyn Rocks. Yeah, ben, we've seen a lot of him this he year as we both do the uh, play by play. Yeah, he's uh, been a really great addition for this Brockton team. This Brockton team that's in first place right now in the East. Yep. You're now to start here at the top of the seventh. Kate is still on the mound for our Team USA. And that will be a ball. Mm. Yeah, oh pitch, and that will be a ball. Ball two there. Here, Obata Hiroka is up at the plate here for Japan. Oh, it's Hiroki Obata. Okay, okay, okay. Hiroki Obata, okay. Here now a 2 1 count. Oh, pitch now we strike two. They're now a 2 2 count. Here is Tim Kate. So far, here now, two innings has not let up a run. He's done a really nice job coming out of the pen here for Team USA. Oh, pitch. That's ball three. 3 2 count. For now, is everyone in the ballpark thought that was going to be strike three call for the first out? Yeah, and, and the uh, the curveball there looks like it came very close to painting that outside corner, but home plate umpire there didn't agree. And now still a 3-2 count. <laughs> and uh, oh, pitch, and that will be ball four. A leadoff walk to start. The seventh here, and as you can tell, Kate's not very happy as he thought that last call before the ball four there thought should have been strike three. Hiroki Takamura is up the play here now for Japan. With man on first base, here with nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Here it is, and the time is 9-10. Here now as USA will have a mound visit. And there is no action on the Team USA bullpen because it appears that Kate will stay in for longer. This could just be about making sure they have the play that they want down. So they can execute it properly. Here with a runner on first base and no outs. It's a delicate situation here. With the, with the uh, ball game still being tied in the seventh inning. And once again, as we work here at the top of the seventh inning, we Tim Keith is still on the mound for USA after that mound visit, but with a man on first base here and nobody out. Oh, pitch that is a bunt that will go foul and with the protective netting behind home plate. Really got away from him there, too. And that bunt, it looked like he was trying to send that down the third baseline. Instead, he kept his bat face open, and because of that, the ball was able to glance off upwards went back into the protective netting. Now a 1-0 count here now. He bunts again, but will not get it as there's now two strikes here now on Takamura. 
And again with no, with uh, no outs, Japan trying to bunt that runner over to second base. Takamura showing his bunt very early, so because of that it looks like a sacrifice bunt and not like he's bunting for a base hit because he's giving himself up very early. He's trying to push that go-ahead run into scoring position. And now still an 0-2 count. And now the man on first base. That will be a ground ball. The pitcher, the pitcher will throw it on the second. He'll throw it on the first. And that will be a double play. A nice play there by Kate. This USA team just grows defensive pitchers, I guess, huh? They sure do. Look at this replay here. Takamura faking bunt. He pulls it back and hits it, but a quick ground ball to Kate. Gets it, spins, throws it to second, and then the throw to first as well is in time. Grenier making great play as well. Kara Shahada. Shamada, sorry. So the play here now with two outs here in the seventh. We're going to O pitch, and that will be a ball in the dirt. Here are the 1 0 count here in the top of the seventh after that double play there. Nice play there by Tim Kate. We run out O pitch, and that will be a line drive foul ball down the third baseline there that will bounce on top of the Shaw Center. Looks to camp in LA Stadium here in Brockton. Here it's turned out to be a great night for baseball as the past couple days here in Brockton we've had some rain. But it appears tonight it was just our night. As it cleared up this morning. A lot of events going on here at the stadium. It was a good night. Definitely a good night and a good day for some baseball. Unfortunately, the sun did not creep out until I want to say about the third inning of this game where we saw some of it. And that will be a ball high there. Almost hits the batter. And now a 2-1 count here still for Kate. On the mound here trying to get out of this inning. No pitch in there. And that will be a line drive into the seats. Here it appears everyone's all right down there. That was a vicious line ball. Another one, yeah. And it looks like everyone still searching for that ball in the stands. It's a tough one to find. There's usual Brockton Rocks games here this season. The little, little kids usually find it faster, but with such a big crowd here at Campanelli Stadium, you know, um, it's going to be harder to find. Here we go now. And that will be strike three called. Team USA gets out of it here in the seventh. They'll be back up to the bottom of the seventh. Now let's go now to Lever Ball with an interview. So I'm joined now by Rock General Manager Todd Merlin. Now Todd, first off, how much does it mean to the Rocks organization to be able to host Team USA versus Japan? You know, this is a fabulous event for us. Um, when Chris Hall from the Futures League called and said that we had the opportunity to do this, we really wanted to jump on it quickly. And as a matter of fact, it's not only us, it's Worcester and Nashua, the Futures League. We've got three of these five games and we're glad to have them within our league. It's great. And you know, how much um, do you think it benefits um, just the growth of the game um, to have an opportunity uh, for Team USA to, to go up against him? Oh, yeah. I mean, not only that, but what we did here today, I think, has an even bigger impact when you look at the base program and the kids that they've brought in and the other kids from Brockton that we were able to integrate into a program where they actually got to do a clinic with Team USA and Team Japan on this field. That's how we can help grow this game. Definitely. And um, also, I know uh, Bryce Tucker from Team USA is actually a Rocks alum. How cool is it to see him suiting up uh, for his country? You know, it's fabulous. You know, for Bryce himself, but also for the league, because that just shows the quality of play that the Futures League is bringing in. And it's getting better every year, and you're going to see more and more of these guys from the Futures League on Team USA. 
Absolutely. And um, also, um, are there any players on your current roster you could see following in Bryce's footsteps and suiting up for the national team at some point? You know, I think one of them could very well be Zach Martin. You know, Zach's having a great year for us. He had a pretty good year at Notre Dame, and he's still young. You know, he's throwing nine. He's topping out at 94. That's the kind of stuff they're looking for, and I think Zach could definitely be one of those guys. Well, I heard actually one game he even hit 96 on one pitch, so maybe he should start throwing a little harder. Yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> well, Todd, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Thank you, Leverett, for the interview with Todd Marlin, the GM of the Brockton Rocks. As here now, we have some highlights here of the starting pitcher for Japan and some of his work today. Fantastic effort, only letting up two runs. Number 20 for Japan. Ben, can you pronounce his full name for me? Ryoji Kuribayashi. Wow, that's that's definitely a um, a very long last name. Kuriba Kuriba Kuribayashi. Kuribayashi. Okay, okay. Goes to Miejo University. Here as the pitcher and the catcher. Here as we look at your screen here. Are talking. That's an interesting catcher's mask. Yeah, there. that's very interesting. I've, I haven't seen that before. I don't think I have either. Caden Rainier is able to play here now. Trying to start off here in the bottom of the seventh here as the Rocks are trying to find themselves in the lead. Here in the bottom of the seventh. There we go now, O pitch. That will be a ball outside. Here, Grenier up 1-0 in the count. Here now, O pitch. That will be a hit and that will be down in right field, a leadoff hit for Team USA. And now the top of the order for Team USA will be up here with Travis Swaggerty. And Grenier's second consecutive hard hit ball. In the fifth inning, he had a very hard hit ball that ended up being a single to right field, and he scored then. Here, an another hard hit ball to right field, and another single. Now, with a man on first base here now, with nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. The game is tied at 2 to 2, and USA is trying to find themselves in the lead. Trying to win to try to be 14 and three and be two up on the series against Japan. That will be a fake bunt. USA with kind of the same mindset that Team Japan had last half inning. The guy on first and no outs, their leadoff guy who's three for three on the night. Thinking about laying a bunt down. And, you know, that's definitely something Japan has, in both sides, have really been aware of pretty much the whole game. Here's a 1-0 count here for Swaggerty. Swaggerty really lives up to his name. He has the, the all-white batting he gloves, does. the he wrist has a lot tape, of swag. the three-quarters arm sleeves, the all-white arm sleeve, rolled-up pants. Not wearing the stirrups though, as you see many of these guys wearing the stirrups today. And that will be another fake bunt there, but that will be a strike now, an 0-2 count. Swaggerty misses, but does not like the umpire's call there. Thought it was gonna be a ball. On a vicious slider there. That pitch started, it appeared to be almost a foot outside. It, it, it curved all the it way into right the strike in. zone. Here's Swaggerty, a little upset with himself there that he did not. Get that down. They're now still an 0-2 count. And that will be a throw back their first base, but he will be safe. They're now still with an 0-2 count. For the man on first with nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. It appeared like Nakagawa actually missed that pitch, or that ball I should say, and it kind of just hit him in the leg instead. Lucky for him there, it didn't go by him. Here we go now. And that will be a ball outside. 
here now. A one, two count there, Swaggerty. Possibly could have been called there on a strike three call. Here we go now, still a one, two count. He'll throw back to first base, but he will be safe. Still a one-two count here now on Swaggerty. He'll throw back to first base again, but he'll be safe. Here now, O pitch. And that will be a foul ball down the third base line. Team USA here trying to take the lead in this game with the score tied 2-2. Two to two. Trying to get up 2-0 in the series against Japan here. Second game of five game series here. And that will be safe at first base here the third or fourth time he's thrown over in this at bat. Pitch and I'll be a swing and a miss there at that nasty slider. There for the first out here in the seventh. Nick Madrigal will be able to play here The way that Grenier has been leading, it makes sense that he's gotten so many throwovers. As you see there, he's kind of leaning towards second base. So he gets another one but slides back safely. You know, it does look like potentially he could be going here with just one out here the seventh. He's and trying to the advance that runner to second base, putting him in scoring position. And as the pitch gets thrown, he kind of takes off for a few steps. Kind of a secondary lead, but he does so so quickly that it looks like he's stealing. It does, and you know, you see that definitely at the professional level a lot. I watched the game last night and they did it. And that will be a foul ball. Is that a replay there? Uh, the near there. As he looked like. There's a potential of that being fair, but as we can see up in the booth, did not stand a chance. Now a 1 0 or an 0 1 count here. That will be a fly ball out to right field. The right fielder will have it. And that will be the second out of the inning there. As Grenier thought about tagging up, but saw quickly how he was throwing it back in. There maybe he was trying to fake out the Japanese first baseman. Steel Walker now will be able to play here now with two outs here after a promising start to the inning now. Two quick outs here could potentially ruin this inning here as they're still tied here two to two. And he will throw it back to first pitch there, and he'll be safe. Because Grenier has not been caught so far this game. He's thrown over about eight times. But he stayed safe the whole time. He'll throw back again, and he'll be safe there. I think maybe on a good throw there, he might be out. Took a bigger lead. And that will be a ball that goes behind the backs up there, but quickly goes back. 
Here's the ball boy there, gets the ball. back again and a bad throw. But one of these throws potentially could go behind the first baseman as absolutely none of these throws have been good over the first base. Now still taking a lead. Oh pitch he'll be going. He will not be stealing there as Ben just like you said he, he's done this a couple of times during this half inning. Looks like he's going, but won't go there. Yeah, Grenier has a very aggressive secondary lead. A lot of times uh, people will slide step about three times. Grenier looks like he's taking off and then stops. Now it's an 0-2 count. And now 0 pitch, that'll be a ball high. The pitcher for Japan is very wary of Grenier there. You're making them a little nervous. He must be in his head at least a little bit. He must be. Kuribayashi has thrown over quite a few times. Now a one-two count, oh pitch. That'll be a foul ball in the protective netting behind home plate. The crowd's starting to get a little louder here, starting to get a little restless. They're just a 2-2 game here in the seventh. Kobayashi's thrown 13 pitches this inning. They're going to O pitch, and that will be a ball there as the catcher for Japan there thought about throwing it to third base to end the inning there, but the umpire did not agree with him. He's now back now to a 2-2 count. Here now, O pitch. That will be a ground ball, that will be foul. At the first baseman will end up picking up and throw into the Japan dugout. <laughs> here's still a 2-2 count here with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. With USA Japan tied, 2-2 two two, still. We have not seen a run in a long time. Going out, O pitch. That'll be another foul ball. We're now with two two counts still. Swing and a miss, strike the recall, and after seven innings, the score is still two to two. Here's the replay of that strikeout here. Fastball, he, he timed it right. Just missed it, just below that pitch. He knows it. Still out 
for the eighth inning here, pitching a long outing out of relief. Still only four runs after seven. Great pitching duel by both sides. You're now to start the top of the eighth. Takesha Miyamoto is up with the play here now. Oh, pitch that will be a ball high. <clears throat> Start the, the the night. Ben, did I come close to pronouncing that name? I think so, yeah. Oh, that might be the first time today. That's okay. Pitch swing and a miss. Takesha Miyamoto. Takesha, okay. The Miyamoto, I did get that right. I did not get the first name right. Got the last name. If anyone is listening back at Japan, I am sorry. Here, Kate has 41 pitches. And that will be a fake bunt. Now it's a 2-1 count. Here it is 9.35 here in Brockton. Here's it is the eighth inning as this game's moved on perfectly to schedule. Here's this been an every good event than anyone could imagine here, a pitcher's duel here, and that will be a foul ball here as it is 2-2. Both sides have six hits. You're a very even game. Both teams have used two pitchers, but Gentry did not go as long as the pitcher for Japan. An old fashioned pitcher's duel here at Campanelli here. And that will be a ground ball to the pitcher. The pitcher has it, he'll throw it on the first. And that'll be the first out and then. I think they do a lot of drills on this stuff because. Oh, they must. This, this, this pitching effort defensively has been fantastic. Kate made that play look so easy as we see the instant replay here, kind of a swinging bunt from Miyamoto. He has to go to his left, which means he'll have to spin, but he spins so perfectly that by the time he's up, it's just an easy toss to the first baseman there. You know, that's, that's amazing. You know, you see these guys now on the professional level that struggle with throwing to first base, and it's good to see that young pitchers can do that. And of course, even for a right-handed pitcher, that's a tough play, but Kate is a lefty, which makes it like five times harder because he has to spin, he can't just pick it up and throw the ball. And now Kate here with one out here in the top of the eighth. And now, oh, pitch, swing and a miss. By number six, Kita Nanawaga. Nakagawa. Nakagawa, okay. I was close, but no cigar. Now a 1-1 one, one count, no pitch. Strike three called there. As a Japanese batter does not like that call. This has been a very good umpired game so far here tonight as the Futures League's best umpires are umpiring this game tonight. Many of them you will see next week in the Futures League All-Star game. And that will be sh strikeout and the second out of the inning as the pitcher, or the catcher, sorry, for Team USA thought it was the third out. Now an interesting way to get a bat here for number seven, Takashi. Kusamoto? Kusamoto. There you go. 
You're now with two outs here in the eighth. Kate has done a fantastic job coming out of the pen. O pitch. That'll be a strike on the outside part of the plate. Here, Team USA has started. Many batters off today with the first strike. It's the name of the game for a pitcher to always get ahead of the count. Here going out, O pitch, swing and a miss. By Kazamoto. Going here now an 0-2 count. Here now for Tim Kate. You're trying to finish off another great inning of work coming out of the pen, but time will be called. Trying to figure out that third strike pitch. So we see some Japanese signs. Background of that shot there. That'll be a ball high. Couldn't tell you what they say, but. Unfortunately, it was in Japanese writing, so unfortunately we were unable to say what it is. You know, a one-two count, you know, now. As Tim Kate, a close-up of him, you can see that he's very determined on the mound. Strike three called. And USA will be up here in the bottom of the eighth trying to take the lead. Back here now in the bottom of the eighth. pitch that will be a ball in low there for Grant Cook and now a 1-0 count and time will be called and now O pitch that will be a strike one one count here now for Cook. Yeah. The game is still two to two here in the eighth as we haven't seen a run in a while in this game since the Bach that allowed that second run to come in. Yeah, oh pitch, now will be a hit and that will get through. That'll be a lead off hit here in the eighth. The second time today. 
Here now. Seth Beer now we have the plate here. Good piece of, hit of hitting there by Cook. Not an overly hard hit ball, but it bounces through, perfectly placed between Kobayashi and Miyamoto, the shortstop. That's how you start a rally. Now the man on first base with no out here in the bottom of the eighth. USA would like, Team USA would like not to at bat again. They trying to take the lead here and shutting it down here in the ninth. But if they're unable to do that, then that will be a foul ball on the bunt there as USA today has really started to not be able to bunt as we saw it earlier in the game, but now later in the game, they're struggling at the plate. Pitch and that will be a bunt. The runner will advance and he'll be out at first, but that's all right because the runner advances to second. Now a runner in scoring position here in the bottom of the eighth. To see the replay here on the pole bunt. Nakagawa comes in and calls his pitcher off so he can ma make the play. Takamura coming over from second place. Second Base, I should say, to cover the bag. Good defense there by Team Japan. And now Jeremy Ehrman. How the play here now? Because no, actually, Andrew Vaughn will go to the play here. Sorry, Andrew, as I got mixed up with the lineup. And now with one out. With a man on second base with a single or a double here could score the run. That potentially could be the winning run today. Well, pitch now will be a ball. <clears throat> Pitch now be in there for a strike. For now a 1-1 one, one count. Oh pitch now be in there for a strike. And Vaughn does not like that call. now a 1-2 count. Here now on Vaughn. You know, O pitch, that'll be a ball outside, but bounces in the dirt, almost gets past the Japanese catcher there, but a nice stop. There are a lot of sophomores on this Team USA lineup, but the freshman, only freshman is Andrew Vaughn. So these guys will be going into their junior year at college and Vaughn will be going into his sophomore year. Right now a 2-2 two -two count, O pitch. That'll be a ground ball, a third baseman, a third baseman will have it, will throw it on to first. The runner will not advance. An excellent play there by the third baseman, letting the pitcher come to third base, making sure it was covered, unless the runner left at third base there. An excellent patience there by the third baseman. And actually a very difficult play there by Kobayashi, as the, the hops that the ball took made the ground ball kind of hard to field there. As we see, it's, it kind of has, 
has an in-between hop there. Kobayashi had to back up and the ball kind of eats him up, but his glove is still able to catch that ball. And he has a nice strong throw to first base. As now Jeremy Yerman, now there we play here now. Here with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Team USA now trying to take the lead into the ninth inning. And now is this game for Dots possibly go to extra innings? Here the way these two teams are playing. No pitch, that will be a ball in the dirt and the runner will not advance. Has waited too long to advance. As he would have been dead to right out at third base. As you can look at the replay here. The ball in the dirt there, he should have left there right away instead. Takes way too long to move. And, and Cook, the cleanup hitter and the catcher. A lot of power. Not the swiftest, the swiftest of foot. A little now, hesitant there. A 1-0 count. Pitch swing and a miss. There by Earman. Hear that? If he hit that, that could have been out of here, and it could have been a four to two game. But misses at that high pitch. Mm. Oh, pitch, and that's a line, and that is foul. Is that was. Almost a home run down the line there. Just as I said, he misses at that high fastball there. Hits an absolute moonshot out to left field, but it will be foul. Absolutely crushed by Ironman there. And from our angle, we, we couldn't even tell if that was fair or foul. We could not. See the replay here. That ball is, I'd say, about five feet foul. So not as close as we thought it was from up here, but still, tremendously hard hit ball. Pitch, and that will be an out. And after eight, the score is still tied. Two to two. They're now getting ready here now for the top of the ninth. Still a 2-2 game. As it appears it will be somebody else out on the mound for Team USA. Number 25, Bryce Tucker. He's a sophomore, and he's a left-hander. Bryce Tucker goes to Central Florida. And it's from and is a former Rocks player. Here as Leverett Ball had a nice interview with him. So it's definitely good to see an old Rocks player and I'm sure he had memories to be in the Rocks clubhouse. That's where the Team USA set up shop for pretty, shop for pretty much the whole day today, I'm sure. He definitely remembers being here. And it's surely nice to come back to a place that you've played before. And he's played at every Futures League ballpark. And he's also from Florida.
you know, getting ready to start the top of the ninth. Taiju Yusimi. It's up of the plate here now to start the ninth. Taishu Yusimi. And now Bryce Tucker, a former Brockton Rock, back here at Camp Alley, trying to shut it down here in the ninth, trying to get USA a chance to walk it off here and potentially head to extra innings. Oh, pitch, that will be a ball low there as the crowd's starting to get restless here with the umpiring that's been very good so far today. Low pitch now in there for a strike for Bryce Tucker. Low pitch and that will be a ball high. A 2-1 count. That's a Muda. Low pitch, that'll be a ball. A 3-1 count there, looked like it was gonna be called strike two. Here you go near now, and that'll be a strike. It's now a 3-2 count. Here Bryce Tucker. Tucker getting that inside fastball call. And now it is now a full count, 3-2. Here in the top of the ninth with the score still tied, 2-2. Two two. And now O pitch, strike three called there, and the batter falls down for the first out here in the ninth. That is the pitch sequence from the last batter there. Ryosuke Tadzuma is up at the plate here. Now for Japan here with one out here in the ninth. No pitch. There'll be a ball inside there. There's Tadzumi. They're backing up there, almost hitting him. You know, a 1 0 count. O pitch. Swing and a miss. Swinging out of his shoes there. Ended up on one leg, leaning back. As we saw that with the last at batter, too, there with the strike three call, almost falling down. They're both looking for the, in the best form. O pitch. Now will be a ball outside. Now a 2 1 count. Two one count. Oh, pitch swing and a miss. And now a two two count. Here with one out here in the top of the ninth. We're now O pitch. And that will be. Not a swing, it is now a full count here, a one out here in the top of the nine. Here, this is a pitcher's duel here in Brockton. <laughs> As neither team's giving an inch. Well, pitch strike three called for the second out of the inning. Nice pitch there by Bryce Tucker. And Tucker knew it. He was already walking off the mound there after he threw that pitch. Losing confidence there from the mound. See the replay here. Tucker with the fastball. Gets that strikeout call, looking over his back shoulder. Here now. Rayo Koba Kobaashi. Is it Rayo or Rayo? 
Rio. Rio Kobayashi, is that correct? Rio Kobayashi. Kobayashi, okay. I'm starting to get better now. <laughs> it's too late though, it's kind of in the ninth inning, but that's all right. This game potentially could go extra innings if Japan here goes with that final out and USA does not get any runs. Low pitch, strike one, it's now a 1-1 one -one count. Here now on Kobayashi. I think the potential for extra innings here is pretty huge. It it's is. It's pretty and likely, I'd and say. And I think this, this pitcher's duel right now, uh, it looks like no team, not either team is going to budge. Low pitch. That is a ball. It looked like it was going to be a strike call. 2-1 count. Pitch, ball outside, 3-1 count. And now a 3-1 count here with two outs here in the top of the ninth. No pitch, and that'll be ball four. Hiroki Abada is over the play here now. He is over three and has walked here so far today. Now, O pitch, that will be a ball. We're now after two quick outs here. Tucker's starting to struggle out in the mound. And time will be called. <laughs> As Cook and Tucker talk on the mound. Here, Ben, this is definitely a pitcher's duel today. Absolutely, a 2-2 game here in the ninth inning. Doesn't get much better than that. Count. Oh, pitch, and that is a ball. And now a 2 0 count. And now on Obata. and he's gone. What a crazy pickoff by that. What a crazy pickoff. There, Team USA will be up here in the bottom of the ninth trying to walk it off here. So you see the instant replay there. Tucker made it very obvious that he was throwing over, but then when he started to step towards first base, the runner there thought that he may have stepped too far towards home plate. So he started to head back into his lead, and, and as we can see now, the coaches and the runner for Team Japan having some words with the first base umpire over, over behind first base. I think they thought that may have been a balk. So of course, you have a certain angle as a left-handed pitcher for where you can Use your stride when throwing over to first base. And the Japanese dugout, coaches, and runner all thought that he may have, have abused that stride. But it doesn't matter because that's out number three. A new pitcher for ja Japan. Masasoshi. How do you pronounce his first name? Masashi? Ito? Say Ito. Ito. 
Masashi Ito. Okay. Masashi Ito. And goes to Budu University. Well, we're very close to either an extra inning game or a Team USA walk-off. They did walk off the uh, first game to win the first series. As it was a two to one win on Wednesday. Just two days ago. Just two days ago, exactly. Wouldn't it be something if they walked off in back to back games? It definitely on be home soil. On home soil, exactly. To their home fans here, as we've actually seen uh, a Japanese presence here tonight near the Japanese bench. I knew there was some talk during the week that they were going to, um, a couple of the players on the team were actually going to have their families actually come and watch a game. That's and, amazing. Uh, it turns out that it's, and that absolutely is amazing, making that long trip here to America. Halfway across the world just to come see a baseball game. And that shows the dedication um, of the Japanese athletes here, of course, coming here to play United States here. Two probably of the biggest countries that baseball is most common in. Your Team USA here trying to walk it off here in the ninth, trying not to force extra innings here. They're trying to save their arms here. Is keep in mind, this is only game two of five. Last night, of course, got rained out. It did due to the rain, and so did the Brockton Rocks game as well. But we'll be back here on Sunday at 4 o'clock for a game here. But Team USA, I believe, will be playing tomorrow. That's correct. They play tomorrow at La Latcher Park. And they play on the 17th at Holman Stadium. And then they'll have to make up their game at Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. Which will be... Sunday, assuming it does not rain tomorrow. We're here now in the bottom of the ninth here. With number six, Tyler Frank. He'll play here now. He is a pinch hitter here for Team USA. He, Tyler Frank, was a pinch hitter in the ninth inning on Wednesday and got the walk-off home run. A walk-off single, sorry. A walk-off single. Almost a home run. <laughs> Almost a home run. It must have felt like a home run. Here now, O pitch. That will be a ball inside there. Almost hits Frank. He has two names that be considered a first name and a last name. So someone could be the name person Frank and have the last name Frank, and someone could have the first name is Tyler, and the last name be Tyler. It's true. No pitch in there, and that will be a strike. Vito on the mound here for Japan. You're trying to make it to go to extra innings. As Japan has not scored a run since the fourth inning. USA came back. Here with a run of their own. On a balk.
direction there, and that will be a strike call. That was back in the fifth inning. There hasn't been a run since for either team. Two two count. Oh pitch. That will be behind the batter. Almost hits him there. It's now a three two count. We're now a full count. Be strike three called to start the bottom of the ninth. As it's starting to look a little more light, we're going to see extra innings, Ben. I, th I think it's likely Grenier and Swaggerty are the two guys that are definitely getting up for Collegiate Team USA. Here as Grenier has a 125 batting average here so far. he Couple of base hits though. He's had a good day he in has. the batter's box. One ball, no strikes on Grenier. Here go now a 1-0 count. He fakes the bunt there but there will be nothing. <laughs> now a two will count. Oh, pitch, and that almost hits him there now. It's a 3-0 count. He did on a 3-0 count here. He might have the green light, and if he likes the way he, if he likes to pitch, he might hit it. Here in the bottom of the ninth, trying not to go to extra innings. Oh, pitch, and that'll be in there for a strike. He did not like that pitch. Oh, pitch, strike two there. As Nair thought it was going to be strike three call and shows up the umpire there. And you hate to see that both if you're the batter, Grenier, there, and also if you're the home plate umpire because Grenier tossed that bat, then the strike call was made, and then you see Grenier take a couple paces more towards first base and kind of hang his head. Mm -hmm in both disbelief and maybe embarrassment too. So I he has think to maybe come back. to keep himself calm. And that will be a foul ball, 3-2 count still. After being up 3-0, Grenier loses his at bat, now 3-2 count. Full count. Oh, pitch. That will be a foul ball. <laughs> We're now one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Team USA trying to walk it off here. Strike three called there with two outs here in the ninth. It appears that we're going to be going to extra innings. This Swaggerty cannot get on. And Grenier knew that that one was a strike as we see the 
variety of pitches Ito threw to Grenier during this at bat. A lot of foul balls. And the final curveball. Low pitch in there for strike one, but it will bounce off the catcher's glove, but no one was on base to advance. And now it is 10-14, almost 10-15 here. Low pitch, that'll be a ball low. Now Team USA trying to walk it off here with two outs. But Swaggerty would probably have to hit a home run. Oh, pitch swing and a miss at that terrible pitch at the plate. Swaggerty. Full and Swaggerty. Ended this evening batting 375. Drove in seven runs, scored 13 of his own. It's three doubles, one triple, but no home runs so far in this international series. What a time it would be for his first. Here now a one-two count here for Swaggerty. Oh, pitch swing and a miss, and it appears we will be going to extra innings. Defensive change here for Team USA. Tyler Frank is into left field, replacing Jake McCarthy as he did, making a hitting substitution. He was a pinch hitter just last inning. Bryce Tucker comes back into the game. Started it. His evening in the ninth. Come back for the tenth here. Is here now going to start the tenth inning here of this game. But they will have a mound visit. First batter will be Hiroki Obata. The, the runner will start at first and second here. Looks like they're trying out one of the new ideas for extra inning baseball. Kind of like how the NHL has their shootout. Baseball going for a more dramatic extra innings as runners will start on first and second to kind of simulate a scoring play already. Definitely have not seen this, and to start the 10th inning here, starting it off, will be Hiroki Abata. Obata, the catcher for Team Japan. Entered tonight 
Still searching for his first base hit. Now with runners on first and second, he's showing bunt. Tucker steps off the mound. Remember here with no outs, we're starting the inning with runners on first and second base. This is definitely something interesting. Um, I have not seen this implemented yet in baseball, so this is definitely um, something that is pretty interesting. You know? um, and also the other team gets it, so it is a fair advantage for sure. As Obata tries to bunt that ball, but it's bunted back into the protective netting. Andrew Vaughn, the first baseman, in very deep. As, of course, he's expecting the bunt. And I'm very interested to see how this format plays out. Because it, it, yeah. it could be very exciting. Absolutely, and I think it definitely adds excitement to the uh, game of baseball. You know, I think the good team is, it, it's good Ball's for Ball's bunted up into the air. Vaughn makes the play oh, yeah. as he was in very deep, and there's out number one. Runner still on first Plays and like second. like that there, you know. You, when you're given two runners that are on base, you know, I mean, that's that's definitely a plus. And if they can get out of this, and look at this replay right here. This day, I'm not trying to insult, insult this team, uh, Team Japan batter, but that is terrible form. It really was. That's bad form there, and you know that's just bad baseball. But now they will have a mound visit. But it appears he, Tucker's day will be done. After throwing have 21 a, pitches. We do have a pitching change. That'll be the day for Bryce Tucker. Came in for the ninth inning. Allowed to walk. But got three outs. Ended up pitching one and one third innings and allowing no hits or runs. Oh, so he did let up a walk. In the ninth inning. Oh, in the ninth inning. <laughs> They're talking on the tenth inning. I said there's no. two men already. <laughs> okay, yes, he did let up a nine. A nice performance by him out of the pen tonight. The new pitcher is Nick Sprengel, sophomore from San Diego, comes from Placentia, California. You know, here, if USA can get out of this, they have a good chance of scoring a run in the bottom of the 10th. Sprengel had an excellent year at San Diego, had a 3.29 ERA and a 9 to 1 record, nine wins, one loss. Struck out 86 batters, walked 33 in his 82 innings of work. And gets the call for Team USA. Uh, yeah, I hate to see it. And I think that, that this extra inning format is especially exciting in a game that is two to two. We haven't even seen a run since the fifth inning. I feel like you don't see a lot of extra inning games that are 12 to 12. Absolutely. Or high scoring. Very low scoring games. And I feel like this is going to speed up extra innings. I mean, Absolutely. I, I, feel, I feel like putting two guys on, you know, you should be able to at least score a run. You know, we see situations where it's bases low with nobody out and teams don't score. So I think this is quite a challenge. You know, if you're the home team here, you can get out of this Team USA. You know, you have a good chance of winning the game in the bottom of the A big down. advantage, especially since Team USA will have their two, three, four hitters up in the bottom of the 10th, Magical Walker and Cook. Team Japan has to know that they need to score a run in this half inning to stay alive, even, even if it's still tied at this moment. It appears we have a pinch hitter, Team Japan. Tatsuki Oraya. Will be coming into bat. Here with one out, the top of the tenth inning scores tied two to two. 
Runners on first and second base. First pitch is outside for ball one. You know, from my understanding, Ben, I heard some talk about this a couple of years ago in Major League Baseball, about extra innings and, and how there are some of these games that are taking 10, 12, et cetera, innings long. And this is definitely something I feel like I don't think maybe the Major League Baseball is ready for yet, but I feel like Collegiate Baseball might be ready yet. I feel like this would be a great way, especially in college baseball, D1, D2, D3, baseball that could use this and implement this. Absolutely. And I feel like college baseball is kind of the, the testing hamster, yes. if you will, for, yeah. for everything like this, for the MLB. And you see the Arizona Fall League now with the pitch count, all those things, you know. 2-0 pitch is chopped off foul into the protective netting for strike one. No, you're right now, if you're the coach of Team USA here, you got to be fan happy with the pitching so far today. It's really kept you in the game here. Usually when you score two runs, you usually don't win the game. And a fantastic job by the USA pitching tonight. Two balls, one strike. Four pitches outside and away. For ball three with one out. Runners on first and Spreck. First and second, Nick Sprengel faces a 3-1 count. in a 2-2 ball game. Here's a 3-1. That one is just outside for ball four. And Team Japan has loaded the bases here in the 10th inning. As that looked like that was going to be a strike call there, but um, unfortunately did not. There's a pinch runner now we put on at first base. Be number four. Number four. Takahira Kumagi. Now with a bases loaded situation here for uh, Team USA. We also have a pinch hitter for Team Japan. Yoshitaka Nagasawa. This is a major opportunity here that Japan cannot let slip by. Here with one out and the bases loaded. If you're just joining us now, Team Japan <laughs> Scored two runs in the fourth inning after USA had taken the 1-0 lead in the third. Team USA tied it up with a balk in the fifth inning, and we haven't seen any scoring since. Scores tied 2-2. Two two. Japan has the bases loaded here with one out in the top of the tenth inning. The first pitch bounces and hits Cook in the helmet, and that'll be a run for Team Japan as they take the 3-2 lead. Very wild pitch from Sprengel. And that will be a run there that is costly for Team USA there. Looked like they might be able to get out of this here with a ground ball and a double play. And look at the replay here. It bounces the dirt there. Just it bounced the wrong way there. Unfortunately, the catcher unable to get it there. And now Team USA now losing 3-2 to two here. And possibly losing by more here if they cannot get out of this. And we mentioned earlier how we really haven't seen more than one or two mistakes at all in this game. Well, there's one right there, and honestly, that might be the worst one of the game so far, the most that costly. Could be. That could cost them the game. It looked like that ball kind of bounced off the seam of the baseball the wrong way. No pitch, and that will be a ball, 2-0 count. I think that's why Cook wasn't able to get in front of it as much as he would like to. The ball popped a different way than he expected. Two balls, no strikes, one out. Here with the bases loaded. We're here now on a 2-0 count. Oh. Sorry there, Ben. I, I keep thinking I'm doing the play-by-play. -play. Riley Gilliam warming up in the bullpen <laughs> for Team USA. Here with the bases loaded and one out. Team Japan already taking a 3-2 lead. A 
3-0 is outside and Team Japan has another runner on and again the bases are loaded. It looks like that will be the day already for Nick Sprengel. Coming in Riley Gilliam. Gilliam the right handed pitcher from Clemson. Comes from Kennesaw, Georgia. The sophomore at Clemson. Gilliam coming in to do some damage control here in a 3-2 ball game with the bases loaded in the top of the 10th inning here with one out. You're a tough outing here for the United States pitcher there. And this is really just the life of a relief pitcher, you know? Come into bad situations. It definitely is. And you definitely have, the, have to have the confidence to be able to get out of those situations, and unfortunately, in that instance, they did not. Riley Gilliam is the new pitcher for Team USA. Gilliam has finished warming up. The batter for Team Japan will be Takisha Mayamoto. The number two hitter for Team Japan. Mayamoto is 0 for 3. He's also walked. ball game so far, huh? It definitely is, and this is a long in. This is a pitcher's duel here. Um, now with Japan has the lead here, they can widen their lead here, and you know, with just a one-run lead, that is not safe in this game. So they're gonna have to score a couple more runs if they really wanna put this thing away. And I'd say it's, it's especially not safe because of that new rule with runners on first and second. Absolutely, and, and that's the perfect situation here. You know, they just take the lead easily there on a play. Um, Unfortunately, with a pass ball, but, you know, hopefully that doesn't cost Team USA the game. Mayamoto now in the batter's box as play resumes here with the bases loaded and one out. Japan leads three to two. The infield is in. First pitch. It's upstairs for ball one. You know, trying to get a ground ball here to anyone in the infield there with the force being at home plate. And the 1-0. Chopped away foul for strike one back. And you know, you can also notice the outfield is playing in, so a deep fly ball. Still would get the run to score, but potentially could get more as the outfielders are playing in. And I think the, the motive behind that is because if a ball is going to be hit that far, a run's going to score anyway. Mm -hmm. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Just misses for ball one. And here's some groans from the wow. crowd. I thought that was going to be called strike. Two balls, one strike, one out. Here's a 2-1, and that is upstairs for ball three, and Team Japan is just one ball away from adding another run for their total and doubling Collegiate Team USA. You know, the Team USA pitcher right now just has to settle down here, try to get something low in the zone that's gonna be a strike. The 3-1 pitch is high for ball four, and Team Japan scores their fourth run. 
And here in the top of the 10th inning, with runners starting on first and second base, Team Japan has scored as many runs as they did the, the entire rest of the game. And that will go behind his head. Wow. New batter. Goes behind his head there that almost passes him. The new batter, Keita Nakagawa. As we see the replay here. Replay. One out count here with one out in the inning. Gilliam sets. And that pitch is fouled back. That actually came close to hit us. We haven't had a ball year long, Ben. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've been waiting for our first ball this entire summer. That came close there. That might have been the closest one of them all. If that net is just six inches shorter, I think it would have been. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one's hit harshly down the third baseline. That's fair. One run will score. Here comes the second run. Japan is now leading 6-2. to two on a two RBI double by Nakagawa. And this game has been busted open by Team Japan. You see the replay here. What a piece of hitting there. Hit the ball down the third base line there. Third baseman unable to get it there. Bounces into the tarp area and scores two runs there. Now it's six to two. Still there's hope here for Team, J Team USA. Here in the bottom of the 10th here with letting two run two runners on. But if they let up any more, this game might be over. And with Ironman playing in on the grass there for the play at the plate, he really had no chance of getting to that ball considering how close it was to the third base line. You know, after saying US, U.S. pitching has done great, so far here tonight, they let up four runs in the inning. And Team USA has opted to intentionally walk the designated hitter, Taishi Kusumoto, in a new rule where they actually do not need to throw a pitch. Just tell the umpire that they would like to intentionally walk the batter, and he trots on down the first base, and the bases are now loaded again for Team Japan, for Utsumi. Watch the first pitch for strike one. Uh, USA trying not to let up any more runs this inning. Because they're already down by four runs here. The 0-1 pitch is outside for ball one. And well, I think the runners on first and second definitely works for the offense. One one, swung on in, missed. It's Utsumi almost did a 360 there on that swing. He almost did. <clears throat> Here's the one two, swung on in, missed for strike three. And there's the second out of the inning. Nice pitch there at that high fastball. They're getting him to swing. That'll bring up the center fielder for Team Japan, Ryosuke Tatsumi. And now with two outs here with the bases loaded. He always hit up the middle, fielded by the second baseman, Madrigal, who flips on over and gets the out. That'll be the third out of the 10th inning here, but not before Team Japan scores four runs here in the 10th inning to take a commanding 6-2 lead. The bottom of the 10th, we'll see Nick Madrigal as we see an instant replay here of the runs that scored in the inning. The first pitch, a wild pitch, and off the catcher Cook's helmet on the wild pitch, and the runner comes around to score. So then see Replay from the same angle. 
didn't see the hit down the third base line that resulted in two more runs for Team Japan. So we haven't seen Team Japan hit the ball very far, but we have seen them hit the ball effectively, especially yes, here in the 10th. Absolutely, and that ball down, down the line there pretty much shows the deal here unless if USA can come back and score four runs here in this inning. And I have not seen the two other runners get on first or second, but I'm sure it's starting now. And I assume it'll be Grenier on second base and Swaggerty on first base since they were the last two outs. Of course, we're still trying to piece that rule together yes, ourselves. absolutely, because <laughs> it's something new um, that they've implemented. In the Futures League, the extra inning rule is just a home run derby. Yeah, after the 10th uh, inning. Is it the 10th inning or the 11th inning? I believe it's, inning. I believe you, we use one extra inning and then one after the one. One extra inning, okay. So we have a new pitcher for Japan, mm -hmm. Yuki Sumori. Yuki is a freshman at Tohoku Fukishi University. And Collegiate Team USA has the middle of their lineup up here in the bottom of the 10th inning when they will need it the most. Nick Madrigal will lead it off, followed by Steel Walker and Grant Cook. And, and as I mentioned, Grenier is now heading on over to second base. Well, Travis Swaggerty is the runner at first base. And leading off here for Team USA with runners on first and second to start in the bottom of the 10th inning here in a 6-2 to two Japan lead is Nick Madrigal, the second baseman here for Team USA. Madrigal is one for four with a base hit in the third inning. Over here now, Team USA gonna try to piece together a rally here with now the new rule with the man being on first and second. Here's the OO. That's upstairs for ball one. Madrigal entered tonight batting 256 with a home run and 11 hits. here with arguably his most important at bat thus far. The 1-0 is hit up into the air. Getting under it is second baseman Takamura and he makes the play for out number one in the inning. Well, you're now Team USA, it's not looking on the up for them. So now they are two outs away from being one and one in this series. Now batting Steel Walker. Walker entered this evening batting 397. Tied for the team lead with two home runs. However, tonight it's 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Which means he's due. The team USA, their bats have been cold so far today. They didn't even get their second run on a hit. They got it on a, uh, a block. The first pitch is in there for strike one. Down by four runs here, which means, on a more positive note, the tying run is on deck. Here's the 0-1. He lays off for ball one. Walker now looking at a 1-1 count here with one out. Runners on first and second, down six to two. One one outside for ball two. I'd say a majority of the fans are still here for this extra inning drama. They definitely are, and it's a Friday night, you know. Um, we have fireworks after the game. 
lot of people are going to stick around for that. The 2 1 is hit up the middle off oh. the pitcher. He looks to be hurt as the ball is picked up and thrown to first route number one. But Team USA mm -hmm. will score a run there. Nice heads up base running by Grenier. As that ball was absolutely rocked. Looked like it hit off the arm. Here's the instant replay. A line drive that hits him right in the forearm there. Very painful for him. He tried to shield it with his glove. Look like at his elbow possibly. Obata picks it up and throws it at first, but that means there was no one covering home plate. And Grenier smartly sprints on down to home to score a run and cuts the lead in half. However, with two outs here, it's going to be tough for Team USA. It looks like Team Japan will make a pitching change. Hiramasa Saito is a new pitcher for Team Japan. Saito goes to Meiji University. There's a Japanese player there running out in the bullpen there. Speed ahead. It looks like it's one of the bullpen catchers. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm not sure why he left the bullpen. Interesting. Hiramasa Saito, however, is the new pitcher here for Team Japan in a 6-3 ball game with two outs. Runner on second base. Now that we have this break here, what are your thoughts on that new extra inning rule? You know, I think it definitely makes the game go by quicker. You know, it's unfortunate um, that you have that. Unfortunately, U.S. Team USA probably will lose tonight because of that. You know, um, I mean, that's what happens when you don't score enough runs in the game. So, um, I think it's fair for both teams. You know what happens with both teams. So, um, I think it's an I think it's a very good rule. But you know, it's um, it's unfortunate that a team has to lose that way. Do you think that the rule has potential to someday be a Major League Baseball rule? I do. I do. Um, I think in the next five years you might see it. Um, I don't know. Major League Baseball doesn't really seem that they really want to change. They like it the way it is. And I personally love the way baseball is. You know. I think in the collegiate level, I think this is a perfect opportunity to test on these things. You know, because later in your baseball career, if you were going to play Division One baseball or Division Two baseball, um, and you're playing in these very competitive leagues, and one day you do get drafted, you know, this might be a situation that's going to happen again. I agree. We've seen Grant Cook digging into the batter's box here with two outs. <laughs> Team USA making their last stand here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Tying run on deck. Although I said that last batter as well. Here's the first pitch, and that one is in there on the outside corner for strike one. Cook did not like that pitch. He did not like that pitch there and let the umpire know about it. Six to three game. The runner on second is Travis Swaggerty. No balls, one strike. The second pitch is low for ball one. Here's the 1-1. One, one. 
Curveball knocked towards right field. Usumi getting under it and making the play. And that'll be the ball game here from Campanelli Stadium. Team Japan has tied up the series one to one, beating Team USA six to three here in game two. Both teams had seven hits, but Team, team Japan able to get runs when it mattered at the top of the 10th inning in this game six to three. What are your thoughts on this performance? Um, overall, I think this was a very good event tonight. You know, um, I think it's definitely good for the Brockton Rocks to have something like this going on here at this beautiful facility. Um, you know, it's definitely good to see some old Rocks players, some old Futures League players here. Um, hats off to Japan. You know, they played a great game. Both teams played a great game. And unfortunately, one team had to lose. And unfortunately, it was our country, uh, the United States. So, you know, overall, a really good experience. Uh, thank you to BTV for allowing us to do the game. And, uh, you know, this is very, very important, I think, for a lot of people. So I believe, so I believe we'll, we'll be having an on-field hit with Lever Ball in just a moment. Planning on interviewing Team Japan manager Tatsuya Yoshinami as Team Japan bows to their fans here in the stands after a 6-3 win over Collegiate Team USA. And I think that the respect that Team Japan has for their fans Absolutely. It's fantastic. They're so humble. And it's a very, uh, they're very proud to be Japanese. And, you know, I think that shows in definitely their fan base. And the people that did show up, you know, that's, it's, it shows even across the world, they're still going to come and support. We'll be sending it down to Lever Ball in just a moment. Again, he'll be in interviewing the Japanese manager, Tatsuya Yoshinami, in just a moment. Yoshinami actually also manages at Meiji where Yoshiaka Watanabe, Masato Morishita, and Ryoji Kuribayashi all play baseball for him. As you can see on the graphic there, this is the 41st USA Japan International Collegiate Series. Definitely an excellent tr tradition here between the two collegiate programs. And now we're going to be going to Lever Ball Live on the field to interview the Japanese manager, Tatsuya Yoshinami. Lever? So we're joined now by Team Japan manager Yoshinami. Now, first off, um, I wanted to ask him, uh, what was the key success in the win over uh, Team USA today?
Yeah, uh, the art pitchers did a good job holding off the you know great American hitters. Absolutely, absolutely, and also um, you know what, what does he think of the uh, the extra inning rules for international play with the two base runners on to start off the inning? Does he think that's the right way to go about it? まあ、本当はね、あの、普通に続けて延長戦がいいと思うんですけど、まあ、いろいろ時間や施設のことがあるんですかね。うん。本当は、うん。いいの、the あの、アメリカみたいな、ま、一応野球が強いチームに対して、あの、あと3試合ありますけども、あの、勝つ自信はどれぐらいありますでしょうかと。いや、もう昨日もね、今日も接戦で、もう勝つか負けるかは神様だ